Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with space exploration. Uh, and we were just a couple of minutes out from Hankerous Orbit. Jaws Balza, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Jaws Balzla, I guess I mispronounced that slightly. So we are headed for Hankerous Orbit so that we can expand our solar array here. Uh, and more importantly, add some energy beaming. Which we are going to be sending to uh, Stardust. We've been beaming it to Oblong Lobelada. It's going to take a little bit more power to get the equivalent uh, heat sent out this way. But uh, there's much, much better, well, significantly better Nacrotite mines here. And just to keep things relatively simple, with our new spaceship design that's going to pick up the Nacrotite, uh, we're sending all of that to... Uh, we're sending all of those ships to Stardust, and we can just keep the old ones going to Black Mirror and Oblung Lobelada. We also need to rush over here and rescue uh, one or two of our ships, unfortunately. We've got one ship that's stuck here because it somehow got here without enough antimatter to go back. And uh, the other one... There's, there's actually several ships. You can't see it here, but we've got several uh, Oblong Lobelada ships, which are at their destination, and they're just waiting for their turn to swap places with that ship. But this one as well uh, managed to run out of fuel, and it's very slowly coasting uh, into position. It's actually going to take 15 and a half hours in-game, which is about three times that in real time. And there's not a whole lot we can do about it, because you can't dock spaceships in space exploration. The best you can do uh, is have them meet at some common destination, like, uh, like this, for example. Hey, sheep say meh. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, if we, sh if we chase that ship and uh, set the destination for both ships to each other and get there, we can click on board such and such a ship. But all it does is teleports the player character behind this ship here in this little instance. So unless I had... Uh, antimatter canisters to unload, which are a bit of a problem, um, because we need a particle accelerator, and we need thermofluid as well, just to make that happen. So we won't be fixing it that way. Something something? But ships are their own surfers. Can't you just go to the ship and deliver fuel? Yeah, it's just not that easy with uh, antimatter. Uh, to make the antimatter canisters, we need supercooled thermofluid in, 25 degree thermofluid out. That's not that big of a deal. But to actually deliver it, we also need to do the same loop of thermofluid. So I would need to put down a particle accelerator next to the ship. And I would need barrels of uh, thermofluid uh, to go into the particle accelerator as well. And then we can pump some antimatter in. Just transfer from another ship? Yeah, unfortunately you can't do that. When you link up with another ship, all it does is teleport the player to that surface. El Whiting, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you go. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Should be a subscription message popping up. Or not at all. Um, maybe the... Maybe the notification is busted? Hmm. Well, uh, I very much appreciate it anyway. Uh, seven months, fat boy. Very, very much appreciated. You can, I've done it. I got stuck. Then figured just die, get another ship, bring scaffold and pipe. Maybe Streamlabs doesn't like Prime subs? No, I've definitely got notification for Prime subs. Well, in any case, I appreciate it just the same. Uh, the same amount. Thank you very much. I don't have antimatter, but I imagine Ion is the same. Uh, Ion is easier, if I recall. Because... It's just kind of like a barrel. Um, making ion canister just requires the canister and ion stream. And emptying it just requires... Veldak, thank you very much for the resub. Much appreciated. Eight months, wow. Refresh did it, there you go, seven months. Why would a refresh do it? That's weird. Much appreciated, guys, and good to see you, Veldak. Bring a ship with more antimatter than you need. Yeah, it's just that I would have to bring... I haven't even made antimatter canisters yet. I would have to bring the antimatter canisters, and I would have to bring some thermofluid in barrels, uh, and I would probably just delete the thermofluid that goes as an output because it's less of a hassle that way. Um, alternatively, I can just park the ship that I'm in here. We'll fill this, um, we'll fill up this storage tank or, or put some antimatter into this storage tank. Um, and we've got a condition on this one that we're only going to pump, uh, we're only going to pump anti antimatter in if one of these tanks or both of these tanks together, I guess, is less than 5k. So that's going to sort out both of those ships. It's just going to take a while before this one gets back into circulation. You can do that in space as well, on the ship's surface. Well, I'll give it a try. Um, I think I would like to park here, and we'll expand our solar array, throw down some radar construction pylons for now, if we've got them. I don't know if I actually, uh, whoops, I do have roboports. They're not active. There we go. Pretty sure I didn't bring radar construction pylons in this one chest here. Because it's not going to be part of the regular rotation. Hype smiley okay. face. Thank you very much for the bits. Much appreciated. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five hundred bits? Very much appreciated. Thank you. I think I need to adjust the volume on that uh, announce uh, notification, though. Wow. Uh, where do I even... We need to wait for the bots to do this for a moment, so maybe I can quickly... No, I think I have to go to the Streamlabs website for that. What else? What other 
balls are we juggling right now in this save? It's been a minute. Um, I think everything on Nalvis is pretty much good for now. I mean, as far as I know. Uh, Nalvis Orbit, we are slowly deconstructing the old stuff. Let's get our spiders in position. And continue doing that. Back to intense lurking, no worries. I appreciate the lurks as well. I appreciate the chatters, I appreciate the lurkers, it's all good. TTS spam incoming. Oh no. Uh, Streamlabs. I think it's Streamlabs. I haven't even touched this in a minute. Oh, dashboard, there we go. Whoops. And like so. It doesn't... This is pretty not stack dense, picking up this stuff, so we'll probably be able to pick up most of the solar panels before we go back, I imagine. Although... Maybe... Oh, we've got solar panels up here. Yeah, this place isn't going to run out of power anytime soon. Alright, the bots are probably going to be upset with her sooner or later, so I'll leave it at that for the moment. Uh, alert box... Where be the volume? I thought I... No, it was before I changed to OBS. I went through all the different volume levels. And tweaked it a little bit. I think we're back to some defaults for that or something. Hmm. I might have to have a peek at this during a break. Let's continue for now. The bots are taking a little longer than expected to fill this out. I'll give them a hand. Uh, assuming all of my scaffolding doesn't get stolen. Yeah, that might be a better idea. Oh. We've got a halo. Actually, with eight roboports... Well, I guess we're down to, like, six now. Nope, that didn't actually take very long for the bots to recharge. Let's do this some more. I'm going to... Uh, get rid of the... Zero... Uh, for the space. How do I set this? There we go. Pick up all the scaffolding that we can carry. Drift down this way. I can't really remember all of the other little things that I could be... Oh, we definitely want to replace some of these old science blocks. Oh, that's right. We were working on ice. And I would love for this to be the drop-off station for ice, but we need, like, 
twice as many ice machines to keep up with that. And I don't know... I don't know that we can actually good, get a good layout for this. Um, this looks like a decent start, but I thought there was something wrong with it. We do need 1.2k water, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, that's right. I couldn't fit the beacon um, so that it could cover all of these things. But what if... What if we just put this back a bit? And the beacon can stay here. And then that also gives us room for our four belts of output. Which... I guess technically we only need three belts, but we're going from 16 machines and we're going to four cargo wagons. So I definitely prefer to just do like four to four here. Uh, so four of these machines does 33 per second, which means we need to use opposite sides of the belt. Um... We have room right here to easily swap sides. Our individual output is, I think that is one stack inserter. Um, we could manage two if we have to. And then... Now that I look at it, wait, can we put this pipe, how, how far does this underground pipe reach? That's pretty good actually. So maybe, except we need the beacon in the middle somehow. Uh, let's see. I want it to look a little something like this. Oops. And like this on this side. Oh, I see. Well, these pipes won't be in the way of these belts in this instance, so that should be fine. And then... Pylon substation can probably go here. Maybe it doesn't need to connect to absolutely everything. Um, and then we should probably be able to do something a bit like this on this side. Um, but I think we'll swap it around. So that we can put it through here. Yeah, I think I like where this is going. And then we can have our balancer. Do we really need a lane balancer for this? No, I don't think so. Just a belt balancer should be fine. Actually, let's use a corner. 
Uh, where's our corner belt balancer? Here we go. Oops. Like that. And then... Uh, what are we doing? A loader on this side, over here actually, uh, considering we actually have three belts of ice coming in, I think just a standard uh, balanced loader should be able to keep up. Hard to see with the spiders. Whoops. And last one. Alright. Connect the wiring. Whoops. It's going there actually. Uh, this is a standard pickup station offering ice to the network. We're going to need some stuck inserters over here. And we're going to need lots and lots of water pumped into this. 6.6k uh, on each side. 1.6, so we need like, uh, we need six pumps. What do we, what do we have here? Six pumps? Yeah. Uh, I guess we have room to put some up here, actually. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Nice and neat. And I'm thinking we can probably pull off 6k uh, if we only have a couple of pipes before each pump. Hmm, that might be a little tricky here. It might be very tricky, actually. Underground's missing too. Oh, over here. We need those here, 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 and furthermore here. I think that's it. Um, I was thinking of just putting some storage here, but I wanted theoretically have this be able to run 24-7 at max speed. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. But then... This is actually potentially going to be pretty tricky. One, one, two, three, one, two, three. A J P. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, if this goes. Should I just hope that four units of pipe isn't enough to slow it down too much? 
Okay, worst case, we have to pump, like, different sets of pipe to different areas, which will be a little bit of a nuisance, but I think we can manage. Uh, probably. Will a train crash into a circuit closed gate? Uh... I think it can. I think I remember trying to close a gate to manage what a train is allowed to do, and it did actually crash into it. Uh, with a regular signal, you can enable or disable it based on a circuit condition, but not a chain signal. You can only read a train, uh, chain signal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will, actually. We can test it. Once the autosave is finished. Did I forget that I was scanning something? And is that why the autosave is getting so big? We're not still scanning this. This is a pretty big area. Uh, and I don't want to trim surface just yet. So that's probably why. All right, back to Nalvis. Um, maybe it would be easier. If the rest of this water input, instead of being up here, was below the same line. Maybe even... All pointing this way. Oh, we can easily test this as well, because we can just delete water. Uh, I might add a container over here, and we'll just keep deleting that so that we can test the throughput. This is another... I, I think I'll add a pump there, actually. Okay. So, if this goes here... Oh. You're kidding, it's one tile off. Uh, what about a long pipe? Too short and too long. I hate that it goes from 9 to 15. Um, the number of times we've needed a 13 pipe, honestly. I guess we can do it like this. That makes it four pipes. Um, this one would have to move over one tile, but it can't. One off, indeed. Use landfill to fix? I might end up doing that. I didn't have... I didn't expect to go to that extreme, but we just might. We just might. We have to be really sure of what it's going to look like before we do that. Actually, I think I already know. So, let, let's rehearse over here before we commit to anything. I think it's going to look something like this. And we need six of them, uh, all lined up. Uh, 
like this. It looks like we could get four of them here. We'd have to add some more over this way. Let's do it. Where's that little blueprint we just made? Can we get one more if we go one to the left? We can. Wait, no, not quite. Don't block the rails? I'm not going to build down this way, otherwise I wouldn't be building this here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, six. No, it's one off again. But actually, if I move this back, that's looking, that's looking like like max rate out of these, out of this pipe here. Okay, so if I delete all of the water in this pipe network, and we just look at this pump here, it should give us a pretty good indicator of how much water we can expect to go through this entire block. Uh, the rate, that is. We need 6.68k. It'll be fastest when it first starts. Uh, I see 2k. That's significantly less than I was expecting, actually. We're less than a third of the way there. Yeah, that's a problem. If we want full throughput here. Um, we can support two of these. With that kind of throughput. Uh, so now the maximum number of pipes between pumps is two. No, it's three over here. Okay, let's try this. Uh, wow. That is a pretty big difference. We went from 1900 per second to 3000 per second. I was not expecting that dramatic of a shift. But we still need to pull that off um, three times, uh, four times actually. So it doesn't functionally really make a difference. Um, so now the question is, how do we get, uh, can we even get that kind of throughput brought in in four different directions? I don't think so. We could just put more efficiency modules in this thing and call it a day. Uh, what? I think we could seven to still get minimum power consumption. Well, it won't be calling it a day. We're still going to have to mess around to get the throughput we need. Uh, so that is minus 80%. We can probably go more speed still. 
we need 4.4k. That is still slightly too fast. Um, no, we got up to 3k, didn't we? We can definitely get this to go through here twice. 3k per second. Alright, I think we can probably squeeze in another speed module as well. And still get minimum or low power consumption. What? What? What did... Okay. What? Max cons Oh, it's just at 100%. Because there's three speed modules in here. Okay, so... Uh, that's 700% power consumption right there. And minus 600% from this. Uh, and how fast would that be? 4.7k per second. We could support that. If we get this kind of throughput on both sides. Um, easier said than done with the shape of all this. But it might be possible. We will need to have these inserters here. We don't quite have enough room to have a pair of undergrounds and then a pump between. Unless... That goes here. Uh... This one's a bit awkward. It was 1900 per second if we go for three pipes, right? Which is not enough to keep up with half of this. So the corner is a problem. I might take a little break from designing that. Oh, we're still building this? I need to pick up some more scaffolding, personally. And like so. What about orbit? Spiders are a little bit full. Let's send them back. I wonder how... I know Naquatite has stopped, pretty much. Everything going to Black Mirror and back should still be flowing, but it's pretty slow compared to what we have going back and forth at Oblong Lobelada. Uh, Antimatter should probably have completely caught up. Yep, that's looking good. And Wait, what? Oh, I thought this was full for a second there. Probably was mousing over this or something. It's about the same color. Oh yeah, we are very full on antimatter. That's good to see. I wonder if I should put more storage in still. No, we've got lots of it. And on Nalvis... Uh, got loads of antimatter still. Bring water in from the south? Yeah. Uh, I'll definitely be doing that for this side, but I might do it for this side as well. Let's see. Also, I think this will probably be enough if we're only doing 3,000 per second. Yeah. I mean, 
probably... Uh, how much do we need for half a face? 2.4k. I'm pretty sure two pumps will be enough. It, it's... These two offshore pumps here are going to give us 2400. We only need all these pumps to keep up the flow rate after that. Uh, why do we still get 3,000 per second? 1,200, 1,200. Oh, it's dropping. There it is. I think there was just a bunch of fluid stored in these pumps still. It just, I, I expected that, but I, I thought it would take like a second uh, to clear itself out. That's interesting. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, each of these pumps holds 400 fluid. And the pipes hold 100 fluid as well. And then we've also got it taking from here, for example. So it takes a little moment to get to our actual consistent peak rate. But yeah, 2400 will cover one of these sides nicely. So, get rid of that. Turn this around. Um, I guess pipe go here. I don't think we'll be doing this, actually. And... I can go as far back as here. So we only need two of these, and then we need... Uh, no more than two units of pipe between each pump. Wait, that wouldn't happen to reach, would it? Three tiles short. Okay. Um, we've got some nice flat areas here. So maybe we don't need any more landfill. I think just having to do a little... Oh no, wait, we can do it like this. For this S-bend. It might be a little awkward. No, I, I, think, I think it's just going to look like this to get it through here. That part was surprisingly easy. Although... Yeah, I guess we just like we did up here, we need to add a pipe here and so on. Alright, so now we know the shape of this part. Um, we can work around it more easily. And we need two hull pumps to support this part. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little difficult to find uh, where we can put them three tiles apart. I guess we could do it here. And then underground. Just like this. Uh, this rail is going to have to go somewhere else. No two ways about that. Can we connect it like so? Oh, that's good. That's perfect. Let's get our spiders in range. Uh, 
and then this one goes here and here and a bit of regular pipe here Okay, so wherever we put... I can't really fit a tank here to test it. Um, but wherever we put a tank like here, for example, we should see that we have 2400 throughput from... Wait, no, this one needs 4800. I messed up with this one. So we need one more pair. Three towers apart. Just like this, actually. And then... That's going to be a good fit. Except the corner has to look like this, actually. And then... It really is a bit over the top, the number of pumps you need. But good throughput. That should do it. Twenty-four hundred. There we go. Okay, that monstrosity is going to be our our new ice block. Uh, we're going to connect this to LTN. Whoops. That's not actually connected properly. Should have just done it manually. And we need to request uh, cryonite rod and sulfuric acid. Cryonite rod, sulfuric acid. Um, we can fit four train loads of cryonite rods, but the throughput of it, even with this monstrosity needing, um, almost 10,000 water per second, uh, we actually only need less than 10 cryonite rod per second, and it stacks to 100. So we're just going to ask for... Well, ice is really important though, so... I think we'll look for a few train loads of cryonite. And I don't know why I'm searching water. We need sulfuric acid, actually. And the throughput of that is relatively slow. It's very slow, actually. Cool. Uh... Switch this thing on. Don't think we need to bump up the train limit. And... We don't have a train unable to get here, do we? No, we're good. Alright, I actually want to see this thing working. What I might do is just put this here until... Wait, which train is on its way? Crynite rods are first. Whoops. Uh, I might just remove the pumps for now. And we'll paste those 
when we look back here and see sulfuric acid waiting so that we can watch it. Okay, more solar power. And I wonder if the bots will reach here easily enough. I should definitely help with the scaffolding though. You are missing one of your belt lanes. Not sure if it was intentional. Belt lanes. Oh, this one? Yeah. Thank you. a bit neater, I think. Crynite rods are still being picked up, actually. Uh, with 24 stack inserters, I guess 16k is not that small of a number. Alright, back for more scaffolding. Wait. How much scaffolding do we have left? I think we've got plenty, yeah. I think I calculated earlier we've actually loaded up on way more scaffolding than we need for this trip. Which is fine. Oh, I should probably bump up the train limit just so that the sulfuric acid can get scheduled at the same time. Actually, I might also put this over here, and we can just use picket dollies so that we can remotely finish the job when we want to see it in action. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that build. Uh, have we actually run out of scaffolding? I don't think so. 32k. Yeah, not even close. This is like 4k per block. I think it's exactly 4096 actually. Um, we've got 4x4 four four flat solar panels, 255 per square with one of them in the middle, not included. It's too far for the bots to get over here, though. There's our cryonite. I wonder how we have an odd number. The stack size is 12. They're all in sync. Oh, it's because... Three from each chest. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Or a multiple of three from each chest. Are you empty yet? Almost. Sulfuric acid train should be almost there. Fantastic. Let's keep an eye on it. We 
moving up to pick that up. Or I don't think I placed it down deliberately earlier. I think the spiders placed it on the way back. Alright, moment of truth. Do we actually get the throughput that we designed this for? It's really just the water going into the ice that's the, the main question here. Hey, hey, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Probably going to be faster and more efficient to lay it yourself. Uh, not with bots? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's why I was standing here with the scaffolding. Oh, they can get... I think they can get to the end. Without adding a RoboPort or Supercharger. But it'll be faster to help them with it regardless. And actually, I want the spiders to start building our blue science next. I was going to get them to pick up the purple, but then I noticed we haven't rebuilt the blue yet. Okay. New version of blue science. Now with uh, tier 2 beacons. Actually, uh, I've got a minute. Let's remove... Why do they not have a recipe? What? That's very weird. Uh, regardless, I want to get rid of most of these unless and until we have to ramp up production quite a lot. Considering we bottleneck on the deep space science, I doubt if we'll ever go this fast again. Uh, please wait, spiders. So I'm just going to have one column for this for now. And we don't need this. Uh, where does this come down? I just heard the character breathing noise, even though we're looking at the nav set. Whoops. Don't want to remove that. That's more what we're looking for for now. Okay. Perfect. I'm just going to leave that there. Alright, spiders to the center. Why is this one not working? Oh. Wait, no, that should be fine. Oh, I missed, like, three of these underground pipes here. That's... That might mess up the balance of these 
cryonite rods a little bit. Mm. Let's drop this down to one train load for now. As soon as it's empty, a train will be summoned and that'll rebalance it. Oh, I do see the blue science there. I didn't update those recipes. It's a little strange. Why is... oh, I see. Hey, Daniel. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think this time I will put the tag for ice uh, here in front of the water so that it's actually visible from the map. Because when we look for it over here, the ice is very, very difficult to spot. So here our max rate is 30, down here we've got 135 per second or so. 90? Wait, what? Oh, because we changed the... Uh... It's slightly more than 90, so we're not wasting that much belt to, to do this. Still. I probably would have just bottlenecked it on two belts if I'd noticed, if I'd realized that sooner. Alright, back to the mole with the spiders. And we'll make sure we finish this on the way back. Where are you taking those? Oh, I remember, I think. Yeah. But you're looking for a hundred prods that we don't have here anymore. Um, I could turn the automation back on for this, but this one ship, for some reason, even though it launches on autopilot, I always have to tell it to start moving manually. And if I don't launch it manually, um, it's going to just sit there and run out of accumulator charge. And then it has to very, very slowly drift to Nauvus or to Nauvus orbit. I guess I could just tell it to land back on Nauvus, but that is a big waste of fuel. We'll be arriving here shortly. And we do have more prod modules, but not so many that it's going to launch automatically. Let's pick up some more scaffolding. How much spare power do we have? Oh, that's significantly better than I was hoping for, actually. Take that that. Alright, I think these two blocks are probably going to push us over the edge for what we need in this area this time. And next we're going to update purple science, or maybe yellow science, it's very close to the mall. Purple's the most complicated one. Yeah, let's pick uh, the old yellow science. Probably be enough 
to make sure the spiders pick all of that up with no further supervision. We've still got just a little bit of scaffolding waiting to be placed. Let me get my spider out so I can click to move. Oops. And speaking of spiders, let's get them to clean up this old stuff. Oh, actually... Yeah, no, I think I did... Wait, what's this doing? There's no power. Whoops. Uh, let's get them over here to start. No, get the construction spiders. Which remote is it? Oh, it's the yellow one now. That's the wrong yellow one. Here we go. Got our new gang of construction spiders to add some power poles up here. But also, I think I did add water. Why is there no water in here? There's no ice. Uh-oh. Okay, this one's working. It's the exact same design. Yeah, so we do have water in the rail network. Apart from the really old pickup here. In orbit. We should be able to get rid of all of this. This is actually all empty. And not so much with the water though. Um... I'll get the spiders to pick up the cargo landing pad, though. And after that, we'll see. There's our scaffolding. Carrying most of a block of solar panels myself. And bots are bringing the rest, I think. Assuming they can reach. I think they can. Yeah, I don't think the balance loader is... Well, no, I know for a fact the balance loader... Isn't going to slow down the ice on the belt here. Uh, with 24 blue inserters with this circuit, uh, it can easily keep up with 90 per second. And I think that was before we got a stack size of 3. So that'll be fine. Go pick up some more uh, solar panels before the bots all run out of power. I do wish the spiders wouldn't struggle so hard to walk over the solar panels. It's very UPS intensive if there's a lot of spiders doing this. Alright, grab some more of that. I should put the scaffolding back, I suppose. And we need to start thinking about... We've actually got 12 gigawatts here. Already. And we have to beam it a bit further, so I think we'll go for 6 gigawatts. For each of these um, uh, energy beam transmitters we're going to put down. Emitters, rather. Let's bump that up a bit.
I want to have room for this, but twice. And using both sides. That should be okay. I was going to say I didn't place all the solar panels yet, it's because the bots have reserved that job. Alright, uh, yellow science is pretty much cleared out already. Let's grab its replacement and plunk it down. But then I actually want to get rid of most of these. And we'll get rid of the spare belts as well, perhaps. goes down here, get rid of all of this, and then I'll wait till it's working, it'll be a lot clearer which bits of belt we need to get rid of. really not fit that? Oh, there's like a little bit of scaffolding we need to add over here. Okay. And this goes here. That goes there. Wait, what? A little bit of scaffolding over here as well, please. And we are pointing this at Stardust. Although, I think until we actually get there, uh, I'll point it at the spaceships. Because we're about to have a series of them swapping in and out rapidly, or relatively rapidly, and I just want to give them as much heat as possible. Although, first I want to confirm uh, our transmission efficiency. Was that where we're going? Yeah, 11 million. Not that it matters where I click on that surface. Uh, transmission efficiency, 10.5% as opposed to 15. Okay, so we're sending like, what is it, 6 megawatts? Or no, is it 60 megawatts? Yeah, it's like 60 megawatts. That should be way more than enough. I don't think we need to add any more here. Uh, I could, however... We've got a robo network here. Uh, how much scaffolding do we have in the ship? 26k. I don't think we need that much. 
And this is how much scaffolding? 326. All right, let's take like a couple of thousand. And I just want to leave some stuff in a storage chest so that we can make changes to this remotely. Storage chest, go here actually. I think this is where I would gravitate towards looking for it. And I don't really need to give it more solar panels right now. Let's get rid of that. Should be a pylon substation. Okay. Um, I also want... How many exactly? What do we have? Beam. We got 46 chambers, 37 injectors, and one emitter. Uh... I have only one receiver. I only need one receiver for the outpost we're going to set up. Um, I don't see why... Oh, you are lacking power for some reason? Wait, what? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I didn't take into account that the power that's available from our turbine generator here was going to be counted in this power network. So let's disconnect that. It's also chewing through our water. Not that it'll run out anytime soon, but still. Alright, so that one's calmed down. How much power do we not have here now? We're actually just one gigawatt short. So let's... I guess we'll throw down another block. We only need 83 solar panels to be placed. But I would rather over than underdo it. Don't really need scaffolding over here. Makes a weird noise. Okay. Um, throw down a supercharger. Copy this out here. The bots should get all of that done automatically, but we will give them a hand. And what else? Oh yeah, yellow science. Um, what is this? Oh, I think I understand what happened here. Well, we definitely don't need all of those inputs. Since it's so close to the robot network, I don't mind picking up. It's actually not that much stuff either. I don't mind picking up what's in that chest there. Um, we break this. That's only supposed to be robots, that's fine. Uh, 
get rid of all these belts. Get the spiders to place this one express splitter that's missing. Also, we should have. Is it this one? No. Where's our deconstruction spider remote? There we go. That might be necessary. Should have used my spider to move around. But now it has to do the stretchy legs. Meanwhile in orbit. Did we not get power here? Uh, we did not get power here. That's the wrong re remote. Just out of range. There it is. Fantastic. Uh, it looks like these guys had no trouble picking up the contents of the cargo rocket pads. Uh, the landing pads, rather. Don't really need any more of this. I might change the provide threshold uh, for all of these to like 50. That should get the trains to take every last drop. Also, what is going on here? It doesn't actually matter if I name this correctly, but we'll do it anyway. And don't do any more of that, please. The ice is gone, we can remove that. All of these. And I'll leave the fluid tanks. We'll come back when... It's as empty as it's going to get. Cool. Back to the ship. Wait. Back to the ship with me in the spider, please. There we go. Our next stop. Wait, how much power do we have? Uh, we literally just need one gigawatt. Oh, we haven't even added any yet, that's why. It's all scaffolding. So I guess that just leaves purple science to reduce our machine count for the old science. Did our spiders get their inventory sorted out? Not quite. I still have to do for the spiders on the ground what I did for the ones in space. which is to split them into separate, more specialized kind of uh, carriers so that there's always going to be plenty of room in their inventory. 
despite those split stacks that we get. That should just about do it. I hope. Okay. Um, I'll actually get this other group of spiders, though, to pick all of this old stuff up. Got to be a little bit more careful how I go about this this time. So that we don't deconstruct a bunch of chests. Since that is more trouble than it's worth. Fantastic. And here we go with our solar panels. Actually, if I place this here, it's not going to try and put scaffolding here, is it? No, I think we're good. It did try to put... With, oh. I guess I didn't have to worry about wasting scaffolding on this. Well, that looks kind of weird. All right, good to know. And we should already, we are so close. In a second, we'll have enough solar power um, to support these energy beams. Okay, um, where even are... Oh, I think they're already over here somewhere. The... Energy beam stuff that we have in the robot network somewhere? Yeah, here it is. Alright, that can stay there. And I'll drop off a little bit more scaffolding as well. You guys full? Yup. Back to the mall with you. And with you. What? Oh, I see. Wait, no I don't. How is there no heavy oil in here? At all. We've got a little bit over here. Well, whatever. As long as we get all but the last units out of it, don't really care. Uh, I was going to put more scaffolding in here, wasn't I? All right to our ship. I can just let the bots finish with the solar panels. It's not anywhere near as high volume a job. Uh, we could get them to... Remove the old radar construction pylons, though. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there we go. Mm. 
Okay. Let's pick up our spider. And nothing else. I guess we can leave that there for a second. Why don't we have a bot coming over to pick this up, though? Oh, I see. Sneaky. Wait, 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 wait. A thing of beauty, indeed. Whiskers, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Pick up the bots, I guess. And you as well. And you as well. Jetpack to go just a little bit faster. And away we go. Uh, I don't even have to double check. I know we're going to Oblong Lobolata. Why did our shields drop? It's fine. Engage. And just to triple check, everything is looking good. We got a couple of hundred megawatts spare. We've got our new energy beams that currently they're pointed at Oblong, but we're going to point those at uh, Stardust, is it? Stardust. And once we head off, once we get to Oblong, we're just going to drop off some antimatter in this storage tank just to get the our two ships that are having trouble back on their feet. Wait, what? This one as well? How? Oh, I just happened to click on Oblong 5 out of all of these that I was randomly checking. I wanted to make sure the others all have plenty of antimatter strength. Yeah, that's a lot. All right, what's up, ETA? Uh, about five minutes. A little bit more. And then, let's not forget to rebuild our purple science. Send these guys back to the mall. As soon as there's no robot network in range, I'll put down the purple science update that we've got here. A couple of those signals need updating. And we're just going to get rid of most of these. Unless and until we need more. But given, given that all of the infinite research is going to bottleneck on deep space science, uh, it's going to take relatively little to keep up with the basic ones. I might not want to mess with all of that. We'll see how yeah I want to be careful what I change here you know what I'm sure that this block is more than enough so we can actually delete that and that and that and that okay cool Let 
let's actually let's not just yet. Don't break that. And then drop these. Drop that. What is this belt? Maybe I overlooked something, maybe I just don't remember. Okay, that should just about do it. Hey Raren, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. How's it going? Hope you're having a great Friday, thank you. Alright, we don't need all this, or this, I'm not going to go too overboard, deleting, uh, every bit of belt, might break something, put the spiders to the middle, they should build all of that. Four minutes to go. We've almost left the hanker system already. Uh, how about orbit? Oh, that's a lot of... That, that's a lot of bots waiting to recharge. We'll give them a minute. In that case, what should we be working on? Uh, I guess we could build more... We could start building our next one of these new spaceships. Uh, where is it? This one? And I believe that goes here. Fantastic. Did we add any more? Oh yeah, we've got our ship here for this exact purpose. Where is this aimed? Oh right, that makes sense. How much power do we have? Not that much. We were expanding it here. Okay, cool. Let's add that right about here. We're still missing just a little bit of scaffolding. Um, let me put this here, actually. And I would definitely like to have the maximum power that we can... Um, oh, wait. That doesn't actually fit. Did I make a mistake back at Hankerus? Luckily we left stuff behind. No, this is only six for each of them. Which should be more than enough. But for our build around Elidus, uh, I want to be able to charge up the new ships really, really quickly. Because they need to get to 10,000 degrees before I'm happy to launch them. A hey, Sigma B. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what power do we have here? 66.7 out of 73 gigawatts. Then, and furthermore, Tastic. 
extend that robot network out a bit. And I might just make it nice and easy to build another block down here. What? All right, fine, we'll put it here. Does not support moving. I see how it is. Whoops. Alright, that'll take a little while. But we actually do already have enough power to support this thing for now. And... 233, 235, 242. Wait, did it just jump 7 and then 2? What? It seems to be a little bit inconsistent with the way it updates the temperature. Seems a little odd. Uh, how much more power do I need to be able to double this? Oh, also that doesn't actually count for anything. So that gives us a couple of gigawatts back, I think. Even though they're not doing anything. So that's 10 gigawatts for each. Uh, transmission efficiency is only 62%, even though it's within the solar system. There's a very quick drop-off. Um, in system, and then a surprisingly slow drop-off. Uh, when you have to go interstellar with the energy beaming. I'm not sure if that's just for gameplay reasons. I mean, I can't think of another reason. So we need ten, another 10 gigawatts spare. We're actually almost there already. Just have to start placing solar panels. And we should then be able to temporarily we'll point this at our new ship since there's nothing on the ground. How close are we? 97 seconds until we reach a bomb. And on Nalvis, uh, it looks like we've finished our build here successfully. Why are we missing... oh, I see. Well, actually, I don't know why we're missing an underground. One of the spiders should still be carrying them. But, yeah, that all seems to be functional. What's our rate from this? 6.6 .6 per second. Huge. All right. Next time I do that, I should definitely have 
make a few blueprints so that we could increase the throughput in stages. One minute and six. Uh, you can just go, actually. Also, what happened to our module box? I think it's just waiting on a ridiculous number of modules before it'll auto-launch. I might just... What do I actually need to do to get this thing to automatically go back and forth, though? I don't know what I'm doing different. We send it a planet at a destination signal and spaceship launch. We've got the clamp IDs at both ends. The only thing I can think of is if I squeeze a solar panel into it so that it has some kind of power source as, a, as opposed to just the accumulator. I don't know if that is why it is telling me I have to click engage. Uh, it's, it's forcing me to click engage every time this thing uh, needs to go somewhere. But that's the only thing I can think of that's unique about this ship. And it's, ironically, the only ship that can be in serious trouble if it doesn't automatically start going somewhere. If I could just put in a one-by-one -one solar panel here, I would definitely do that. I guess... I'm not sure if keeping the speed low enough would mean asteroids don't spawn. But I don't think we could even... The smallest solar panel we can put in is 3x3. Three three. If I move all the chests over here, we'd need to make it two tiles longer. Can we fit that in orbit? Oh yeah, definitely. We can exactly fit that, actually. How do we do this? In fact, we can only just pull it off. Oh, whoops. Um, can I just pick a dolly this? Yes, fantastic. So then we should have room for an old fashioned solar panel. Right in the way of the door. Not that we ever use it. Wire goes here. It's got power. Uh, that should just about do it. So once it, once all of these prod modules have been picked up, it should take off. We did just change the design, so it might want us to um, it might want us to click engage at least once, but hopefully, because we added a power source, it'll actually move on its own in the future. We have arrived. Um, where do I want to put this? I guess here is as good as anywhere. Oh, we get the prods in here now as well. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so I want some scaffolding. Right about here. We'll add... We've got all the antimatter. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, 15 pipe is a pretty good fit. Almost perfect, really. And we're just going to let those equalize. And as long as these are less than 2.5k each, um, that's going to pump antimatter in. And I disabled auto launch on this one because I don't want it to launch the millisecond that it's got enough antimatter and potentially have trouble getting home. Although pumping 1000 antimatter per second and it takes like a second or two to take off, I seriously doubt this thing's going to run out of fuel halfway back. But I'd rather be on the safe side. Uh, one moment, please. Sorry about that. Can't exactly ignore phone calls right now. Okay. Disabled by control behavior. That should be more than enough antimatter to get home. And then our next ship is going to jump in immediately. And it's going to be quite a while before this one gets there. How many chests do we have over here? 22 and 28. Okay, so it's going to be less than one uh, shipload before we're back to being bottlenecked on uh, 12 macrotype per second. You have to do what you have to do? Yeah. Can't really... Uh, I mean, not that I would expect uh, that kind of call at this hour, but occasionally uh, looking for work kind of calls. I've had it all sorts of hours. Okay. So, I think... I think we'll just leave that there. Delete it in the right order, and we won't lose any of the antimatter. It'll get pushed into the nearest pipe. How many Logibots die? Too many. More than zero. We're getting, uh, wrong button. Let's see. Over the last hour, 71 logistic bot funerals per minute. Rip. That's for the whole, uh, the whole game, though. So basically one per second, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. F for the bots, indeed. Fantastic? I don't think that's fantastic. 
Um, have we done everything we need to here? I'm pretty sure we have, and we can swing back on the way back if I'm wrong. Uh, we've got plenty of bots actually in this thing, right? Yeah, that's good. Alright, let's head to Stardust. And away we go. If I can click on Engage. Alright. So we're not going to get exactly an explosion of Naquitite heading back to Nalvis, but we will get a we will get a bunch of ships as close together as possible, uh, leaving the same distance apart, except that some of them have ion engines, so not that fast actually. Those shields give your ship a whale-like look? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I quite like uh, this configuration with the shields up the front. Just a little unfortunate that with the energy beam receiver, I couldn't quite have them concurrent. There's a little, little tiny gap here. But that spot is absolutely covered in lasers, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. It looks very effective? Yeah, it is. In fact, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I've only seen the shields... Oh, this one hit... Something hit this one, actually. Most of the time I only see the shields catch something on the sides that could very rarely be a threat to the back if it's coming in sideways. Alright, what's our ETA? Less than four minutes before we get to Stardust. And then... I kinda need... Well, I need to ride this ship back anyway. So I'll do some manual emptying of this stuff when we get there. Oh, how's our next, uh, next one going? It's almost at 5k already. Very good. That's 20 energy beam injectors for you. It's got sulfuric acid, it's got, uh, I was going to say, surprisingly little antimatter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Maybe I should go to the trouble of putting antimatter booster tanks here. I'll switch this off for the moment. And then, as soon as that's empty... I'll swap these tanks out for the double density one. Actually, why don't I just... Why don't I just add more regular tanks here instead? I will need to move this, however. Because we definitely want to have enough antimatter stream to fill one of our new ships. Dropped off at this location. How many tiles is this? Exactly nine. Fantastic. And connect like so. And we'll look for uh, like 400k.
Oh, we've still got that random rock there. <laughs> let's let's remove that actually. I don't want to keep that rock stuck to my player ship for the for the rest of the playthrough. All right, I'll switch that back on then. Well, at this rate, we're going to reach peak uh, at max maximum heat before we fill up the antimatter tanks, which I definitely don't mind. But it was an emergency anchor break. The rock was. Alright, cool. Let's send our spiders back over here. And... Uh, we've still got some old stuff lying around here. Let's get rid of it. Well, we've got a lot of old stuff all over the place, but these blocks that we've already emptied for the most part is more what I was referring to. Okay. And that goes there. That is an odd gap in the robot network. Oh, I can't pick a dollies those around, but these ones I can. How much water do we have left? Lots of water. More water than antimatter. Which I kind of prefer, to be honest. We are almost at Stardust. And I haven't actually designed uh, this just yet, but it's basically going to be a copy paste of what we've done at Oblong Lobolata. Uh, we will have these ships bringing ice in the one miscellaneous chest. We will use one of these power plants again. Uh, we will have media point defenses. This stupid contraption just so that we have uh, repair packs where they need to be. And I guess we could perhaps mine some ice ourselves if it's nearby. It's not that nearby. Will you eventually be able to use only shields? Not both lasers and shields? Uh, yeah, on a bigger build shields only would probably work pretty well. Although the lasers are one quarter the size of the shields, so they make a lot of sense for that reason. But yeah, you could definitely do that. I don't know if it would be more energy efficient, because the lower the shields get on energy... Uh, the more power they use to recharge. Although I don't know if it's still the same amount of... Oh, wow. Yeah, that. That is a reason to maybe not do that. We'd need a very big ship. We're not getting uh, the maximum out of this... Uh, temp turbine generator because we need three condenser turbines 
or more like 2.5, uh, to be able to keep up with the 500 degree steam output. Um, but I think we get like two thirds power out of this, or maybe sometimes we get more, sometimes we get less. I'm not entirely sure about that. Come to think of it, that right there was actually a reason um, that maybe we should have more accumulators. Because it actually dipped into satisfaction for just a split second. Um, I could get some Naquium accumulators. We've got a few lying around somewhere. I don't think I have them on me. Oh, I do. 32. 32 isn't too bad, but I think that's like all of them, possibly. Yeah. I haven't unlocked them yet either, I don't... Th oh, yes I did. Yeah, there it is. Naquium Accumulator. One Naquium Cube is the main cost of it. That's actually not too bad. Hmm, I could maybe see myself start to manufacture these now. Because a Naquium Accumulator is actually, like, exactly five Holmium Accumulators. And I think if we had five times as many Accumulators here, that spike wouldn't have affected us. And I don't... Particularly, uh, we've got the spare hull stress compared to container stress. I could spam more holmium accumulators, um, but I don't particularly want to. I think I'd rather just upgrade them to Naquium. But first, we want to establish lots of Naquium throughput relatively. So let's get that to happen. Um, I think this time... Is this... Yeah. Uh, this time... Let's make it nice and easy to have like a square mine. And we'll remove the excess scaffolding that we don't need. Factory fast than light? Faster than light? Oh, we're here. Let's land. And because we're actually arriving here in the exact same ship, uh, ship type that's going to be picking up this stuff, we can build... Uh, where do I want to put this? Our chests are mostly a little bit towards the back. So I think if we build it up here, maybe? That also means the door is in a convenient place for once. FTL is a great game. Yes, it is. Is there a way to use the steam to water recipes on a spaceship? Yeah, there is. Um, wait, do you mean water to steam? Because there isn't really a steam to water set of recipes. I was looking at that pretty thoroughly, actually, because why are the bots like this? I was looking at that pretty thoroughly because I was trying to design a ship that ran on nothing but steam. In my game, there is. Are you using Crastorio? Yeah, I think the bots are going to keep trying to place these scaffolding tiles where they don't belong. And then they keep doing it in little waves. 
So until they figure all of that out. It's going to take that little bit longer. Why does this say zero iron on the deconstruction planner? It's kind of weird. Seven stone, zero iron. Indeed. Uh, let's put down a supercharger. Whoa. Okay. I use some turbines to turn steam into water. Yeah, I think that's the only option, right? We slightly lack... Uh, if we had one more turbine here... Um, we could theoretically get one gigawatt out of the high temp turbine generator, but making it fit well, and uh, of course wanting it to be symmetrical, uh, that's kind of a problem. But this thing, most of the time at least, produces way more power than this ship needs. So just turning those into Naquim accumulators pretty much make it perfect actually. I wish the bots would be a little bit faster about this. That one said zero copper as well. I think it forced a refresh when I put down, yeah, when I added a supercharger to the robot network. That's interesting. Not this time? That's kind of weird. Alright, so miners, or drills rather. Let's put some prods in, and we can copy-paste. Uh, actually, I would like to do it like this if we can. Uh, that little bit of Naquitite, I don't want to miss it. Whoa, that's... Not quite right. How about a little snap to grid? Okay. Tiles? We don't need the tiles. Still waiting on the bots. Actually, this one should be sufficient. Then again, I kind of want to fit as many miners here as I can. Especially since we've got the modules to back it up. Why are the bots like this? Oh, I think I see the reason. There we go. Much better. Uh, we still need a little bit more down here. And here. Alright, so I think we have full coverage. Now it's just... How many more mines can we put down before we run out of prods? I do have a single solitary productivity 9, so we'll put that in here, I guess. And I actually don't think I'll worry about... Uh, let's put this one here at least. Because that should get, yeah, 593,000 before it runs out. Uh... The rest are a little would be a little bit pedantic. 
Okay, so we are going to need... Sulfuric acid. That's a little close. Like so. And a pump. And maybe a 15 or two. Let me guess, this is like 13 tiles? 14 tiles. Alright. That'll do. And then... Connect like so. That's the wrong type of underground. Connect like so. Are we going to have throughput issues with the fluid? I seriously doubt it. Oh, I didn't put a beacon in yet. I'm really glad I didn't connect that yet. Uh, this would be 1.6 per second fluid, by the way. Not a whole lot. Uh, but can we fit... Okay. If we remove these two... Do we still have full coverage? It's a little bit hard to see. That comes down to the next passive provider chest. Inclusive. And this one... That pipe, not inclusive. Yeah, we just barely have full coverage. Cool. That's easy. Let's put in our beacon then. And this is all connected. That goes there. That goes there. Alright, if we go for nothing but speed, we would still only need 37 sulfuric acid per second, but the power consumption would be ludicrous. 12.5 um, megawatts times 40. Five hundred megawatts, half a gigawatt. So that would consume. Uh, what, what am I looking for? About four hundred water per second. Or four units of ice per second. I don't think we want to do that. Let's start with our efficiency nines. And then see what this looks like. That's plus 100%. Uh, Alright. And then we'll fill the rest up with speed modules and put in efficiencies until this is minus power consumption. Minus 80%. Uh, this is 100%. I think I'll go for the minus 80. So that leaves us with 100 kilowatts times 40, 4 megawatts. That's 40% more than this wide area beacon consumes just all the time. Also, I kind of almost missed the fact that this one won't be under the beacon. But it's got, like, a minimal... Actually... No, we don't even need that one. Yeah, let's just leave that one out. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure this reaches everything, no matter where we put it. Hey, the west dude. 
good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, I think we're ready to get started here. Why are they hovering with scaffolding? Little pipe. What's methane ice good for? I haven't used it in my SE run yet. I'm pretty sure you only get methane ice from like asteroid belts and places like this, right? And there's a couple of recipes. Uh, there's three whole recipes that use it. Bio sludge plus methane gas makes crude oil and recycles some bio sludge. Well, ninety percent of it actually. So a thousand methane, a thousand methane gas plus ten bio sludge becomes a thousand crude oil. It's a lot easier just to get crude oil. Nutrient gel with methane gas might be significantly more resource efficient compared to with the other resources. And that's a barrel. So pretty much just this potentially. Nutrient gel. Uh, we've got one coal, four chemical gel, 20 bio sludge, 25 cosmic water. Versus four becomes five. It's actually more chemical gel. Half as much bio sludge and a little bit less cosmic water. And of course we trade coal for methane here. One methane uh, one coal is fifty methane gas. So how do we get it in the first place? Methane ice? Wait, what? Oh, I think I... One methane ice becomes ten methane gas, so we need five of this to replace one coal, which is actually less stack efficient than coal. Yeah, I don't see that as being worth the effort. Unless you're having trouble with coal, and you can offset it with that. Crude oil is definitely easier to get by mining, yeah. Could you humor me and check recipes that produce water? Uh, sure. Right click, I think. No, that's left click. Uh, 100 steam makes 99 water. Huh. Huh. It's not made in an electric boiler. It's made in a chemical plant or a biochemical facility. That's why I missed it. I guess that makes sense. Oh, this is like a secret internal recipe. That's part of how the internal high temp... It, uh, part of how the high temp uh, reactor works. Same goes for the condenser turbine. There's a lot of them. Great, I don't need to use methane ice then. Yeah, I can't be bothered with it. This is going pretty quickly. Oh, I forgot to put the prod 9 back into one of these. Let's use the one closest to the center. Okay, uh, so we've got our, we've got our sulfuric acid, all of our drills are working, uh, I would like to have some storage for the sulfuric acid, this is pretty much overkill and I don't care, that's fine. That should be empty pretty soon. 
And then we need scaffolding here. More scaffolding, please. And we'll put the circuit logic down. Uh, first things first, we want... On the green wire, which we can use to read the fluids, uh, we are also going to set requests for the vast majority of the chests here. Uh, I think it's 480. Naquitite is the maximum that will fit. So when the ship arrives here, it'll have all of those ship, uh, requests set. On a red wire coming from here, we want to set the destination back to Nalvis, which is planet 316. It'll be coming back to here. We can actually smuggle that onto the same constant combinator. And setting planet ID onto these set request chests isn't going to do anything, and giving a signal of Naquitite to the spaceship console isn't doing anything. So we can just use that for both of those. So that's our destination, is Nalvis. And then... Uh, we're going to have a decider combinator. Under a certain condition, we're going to send it spaceship launch. I'm just going to set it to input count until we're ready to leave. Uh, input count being zero, so it's not going to do anything. Can just make that nice and snug over here. Actually, that looks most natural, I guess. Bottom chest is outside network. Oh yeah, I haven't put any thought into where I was putting the uh, uh, supercharger. We can just put a roboport right next to it, actually. Actually, actually... Oh, that would still need to go all the way down here. Hmm. I could turn these two around and put uh, construction pylons right next to them, but why would I? Uh, I think I'll just put... The supercharger's passive power consumption is just like two roboports. No, uh, I think I'll put the roboport down here. The bots will have somewhere to live. Um, and also, when they are doing their job up here, they'll tend to go to the supercharger to resupply, uh, to recharge. That'll be fine. And... We need to calculate what is in the ship. So for that... Oh yeah, I didn't do it this way with Oblong Lobulata. That's why this is a little bit unfamiliar. So we need to use wire to measure the contents of... That's a little bit inconvenient. I don't think it's going to matter if we connect it to sulfuric acid. So we're going to get... Contents of these chests will be subtracted from what's in the robot network. So that can be a pylon substation. Uh, let's see. Arithmetic. 
Can this reach? No. Should I put this over here instead, maybe? Move it over here. Actually, I don't mind having another RoboPod. Okay. So we're reading... Uh, Nacrotite. We could just do each. It won't matter if we get the sulfuric acid, but let's do it sort of properly. Nacrotite times negative one output Nacrotite. Oh, that is not... Gotta watch out for that. When you have the uh, crafting combinator mod and you use search, it will tend to give you some signals that are not necessarily helpful. Naquitite times one output Naquitite, uh, times negative one rather. That's gonna go onto our pylon substation. And we're subtracting it from everything that's in the logistic network. Which is going to include the ship. So now we know how much is in the ship. And... Does this really have to be that close? No, it shouldn't. Connect this up here. Fantastic. And then... Uh, we can make a decision based on that. Uh, how much Nequitite fits in here? 34... 33 chests, because this one's different. Oh. What the... Oh! Oh, we do need separate constant combinators here. Uh, okay. Let's bring this one down. Remove that. Put that there. And... Red wire is just the planet. Green wire is... Nacrotite. Because this chest is connected to the red wire, so it's going to be requesting Nacrotite. I will have ore smelting using Vulcanite recipe for better productivity. Feed it by ore train. A few designs. Oh, this is a whole thing. I made a few more new designs for my ore processing. It'll be great. I will not need to delete resources. We'll see. Uh, the second D6. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so how are you going to not delete resources? Are you just going to build storage until the end of time? Bottom chest is outside network, yes. Have ore smelting using Vulcanite recipe for better productivity. Feed it by ore train. One virtual ore patch? Virtual ore patch? It's from scrap recycling. Oh, I see what you mean. That has absolute priority, yep. Core processing, second highest priority to be consumed. But it outputs middle or multiple ores, so it will happen eventually that some ore will block all others, but for that there's third priority. Third priority is core fragment processing, but using specialty fragments, they break to core fragment ore and stone. So those will run kind of side by side with normal core fragments, but with lower priority. Last virtual patch type thing. Can't wait to see it all running. Me too. Alright. Um, so I think that's it. We know there's seven, uh, 6.7k Naquitite in the ship. 
Uh, we're looking for 33 chests worth, which is 15,840, uh, greater than or equal, well, let's just go greater than, 15,800, because occasionally the bots uh, don't quite fill up a chest that they're supposed to. For some reason. I think it's got something to do with the cargo size for the bots. It's rare, but it happens. So we're just gonna leave that last... Did I set that to 15,800? Wait, what? 480 times 33. 15,840. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I doubt we're ever going to get the bots under supplying the whole ship by 40. Um, we need to make room. I mean, we're just not going to completely fill this with Naquitite for this trip. Solar panels are useless here, so we're not going to put those down. We do need to decide where our power uh, plant is going to go. Since we've already got this scaffolding, maybe we can kind of fit it not here at all. I kind of like this, to be honest. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's see if we can make that happen. I'm sure we have enough scaffolding, actually. And since we brought enough parts, even though it's overkill, uh, I think I would like to make sure we build the power plant to its fullest. How much more room do we need? Just a little bit. Uh, eight tiles in the middle. And we'll be needing a... Where is it? Biochemical facility? This gigantic thing is what's needed just to melt some ice. Buster chest. I'll move it around once we know exactly where it needs to go. I don't think there's any reason to hesitate on putting out ice in here, though. Let's get our power. Uh, here is pretty good, I think. It's going to be a little bit onto the Naquitite mine. I think that's actually a problem. It takes up a little bit more power than I anticipated. Uh, space, rather. Alright, let's get our energy beams pointed here. Uh, dust and I think for the moment I'll point both of them at that one we've got plenty of heat here uh, but once we get this up to 5k I'm going to point the other one where the ship energy beam receiver is going to be And 
And then water needs to go in here. So I'll move this down one tile. And we'll just... Actually, that's no good. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, we need a pump just so that we can control input. Can we move this over... How many tiles? Well, we could always move that stuff, obviously. But that's actually all we're looking for. And... Actually, we don't need a pump here. Because we can control it... Uh... We can control it with the inserter, but we don't quite have room there. How about we put this here? Well, we have room, we just don't have the wire reach, rather. And since we get a, exactly a hundred water from each bit of ice, that's sort of more precise than using the pump because the pump tends to keep going for a little while. All right, so water, less than 24,500. About 500 water per uh, storage tank should be more than enough spare space. that reach everything? No. Uh, I don't think it matters terribly. Actually, I want this to connect to the, the spaceship itself. And then that should be fine. These wires won't be here when a ship lands. So the ship is providing slash receiving power to everything. We're actually out of ice. I guess that's not that shocking. Uh, we're only at 104 degrees. What's our efficiency? 10.5%. Uh, that's right. I remember checking that. So we've got 12 gigawatts being pumped over here at 10.5% efficiency. So like 120 megawatts. And this thing stores a ton of heat, so it's going to take a while. Not to mention it's also heating up uh, eight high temp heat exchanges. So the amount of energy this thing can hold on to uh, is quite a lot. It's going to take a while. Meanwhile, we've only lost 80 degrees out of 5,000 before this thing becomes, uh, stops being operational. So I'm not too worried about pointing the beam at the ship right now. We do need one of these silly little contraptions. just so that we can put our repair packs here and not have them rush back up to... Oh, yeah, I guess actually it's a lot easier here. Because we're using set requests, uh, we just don't set request on this chest at this drop-off station. So we don't need one of these weird contraptions. Uh, we can literally just have a buffer chest that looks for repair packs. And that should be more than sufficient. Uh, but we will have 
set filters, blacklist, negative 49, read robot statistics. Oh, we're actually only aiming for 50 logistic bots in total. Is that enough? It probably is. Yeah, I think that is enough. Because if we have enough ships to keep up, uh, we won't end up with, like, full chests of Nacrotite here before the next ship comes. So we don't have to worry about bot attrition here. Well, we will a little bit potentially get some bot attrition because this RoboPort is going to have some bots in it. Uh, that shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, we need to request robots here. Why don't we have... Let's see. Bots get put in here. And... Set filters blacklist. Total construction bots available logistic bots. Okay. How many did we bring? A stack of each? Bots should be... Wait, what? What are they doing? Alright then. gonna put all of these bots in here so we make sure we leave the first time with a supply of bots all right sulfuric acid check uh, robots check power check circuit logic Set requests Naquitite when Naquitite in the ship, which we get from subtracting these chests from the robot network. Uh, when Naquitite in ship is greater than 15.8k, launch ship. That's not going to happen because there's too many solar panels and too much scaffolding locking the Nacrotite this time. Uh, but that should pretty much be it. Oh, uh, media defense. That's kind of important. Let's get that in place. Point defense. Um, I think I'll put down a line of those here. I could use that chest as well, but I'd rather not. That's actually a perfect fit. What's the range look like? Oh, that is perfect, actually. Yeah, we don't need more than that. Um... I also don't think we need more than yellow inserters. This part. I guess I didn't set inserters to be resupplied here either. It's fine. Ammo. Yeah, that should be way more than we need for media point defense. All in all, uh, this is a very nice, nice little outpost. Nice fit. I'll probably steal from myself when it comes to making the next one. I could just leave the scaffolding here. We can consider that as, like, storage in case we want to mess with anything else. We do have Naquitite just over here as well. 
And I still have a hundred and five productivity modules. We'll have to extend the robot network out a bit and put in some more media point defenses. But I think we probably should set that up now, all things considered. How's our new ship coming? 10,000 degrees, let's go. And it's already got all of this stuff. I should add inserters to that list. Just 47 slow ones. 47 so that we don't go over the stack size. And then same thing over here on the very off chance that we ever need to resupply that. That actually just barely pushes us over the edge to needing another constant combinator. Okay. Insert. And we'll have to send some, or at least a construction spider over there at some point. I've actually got this spare one here. Is it on this remote? This remote? Yeah, there we go. Pay that a visit, please. And we need to get this one moving. Should already have its inserters. Fantastic. Alright, please go to Stardust. And this will be the first ship that automatically picks up all of this Nequitite. Once it's ETA, it'll take a moment to accelerate. Oh, I didn't give it a name yet, either. Do I... Do I need to engage? I do. Stardust 2. We'll make this one Stardust 1 when we're done with it. Engage. It's already at 50, wow. 81. 92. Uh, I think it's going to take about 15 minutes to get there. I know its top speed is above 200. Oh, and we should check... Yeah, there's our stream of... Why are you called Fulma? I think that's Oblong 12. Um, I can't see where it came from, right? But I know it was oblong. Cool. That's going to be a nice, uh, nice big injection of Nequitite. Now then, uh, we just need to extend out this way. Let's add a robot port. Actually, it needs to connect to this one. Oh, that's... No, we just barely got it there. That'll do. 
don't actually need the scaffolding for a pylon substation. We need one more. Um, I guess I could do... It would make a lot of sense to do some active providers and put some storage chests here. How many chests are we filling? 33. So if we put like 15 or so on either side. Fourteen and this is kind of in the way. Oh, don't put random stuff in there yet. How dare you? Okay, this is for Nequitite only. Same goes for this lot, and we're going to read contents. Connect that down this way, and that's not quite right, is it? Uh, I guess we can just connect that there, and then this would have to... Hmm, if I use a different colored wire... That's going to take some undoing, but we can do it. Actually, it's going to take a lot less undoing if I... Do it this way. Uh, let's switch this off for now. So we're going to swap this green wire here. For a red one. So the red, t the red wire tells us what's in the ship. Green wire is going to be reading all of these chests. Uh, that's already connected, actually. And then we can connect green wire like so. Hey, Marsh. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. By the way, T-Hacks, which mod is it that you can see the stack size of items? It's actually not a mod. Um, if you go to debug, which is F4, uh, debug settings is F4. I'm pretty sure these are def default keys. Uh, F5 shows you debug stuff, and F4 lets you change what is or isn't visible all the time or in debug. So I could actually change it so that... I think it's... Show debug info tooltips, maybe? Uh, let's see. Show debug info tooltips. Uh, how about Nakuim Ingot? There it is. Item stack size 10. So yeah, F4 is what you're looking for there. No worries. I have some issues with the module inserter mod. Can't get it to actually insert modules. It overwrites what's currently building in the assembler and doesn't add any modules. That's weird. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about that one. It's not... I, I, I didn't write it myself. Uh, I want this to go 
Why don't we just blueprint this? Uh, we don't need to snap to grid, I just need the tiles. There we go. And then... Put some scaffolding here until we know exactly how much we need. Except I should be more careful to avoid putting it on the ground just because the bots will try to deliver it there before figuring out they can't do that. Alright, that should just about do it. I kind of don't like that, it looks weird. Oh, and we need to get the sulfuric acid all the way over here is the only thing that makes that a little bit more difficult. Um, which would be the easier way to do this? Let's see how many 15s this is. Will it even let us put this here? I don't think it will. We need to switch off the shield. No, it will. The bots will do it. Oh. I think the shield is in the way. Wait, it let... Oh, I see. So, I bet if I switch this off, and then switch it back on again, and then it'll not actually cause any problems. Oh. Uh, we'll have to do the same thing up here, I think. How well is this going to line up, I wonder? It's actually pretty far. Uh, let's grab the rest of the scaffolding. On the plus side, the more scaffolding I spend, the more Naquitite we're taking back. Why does it make that sound? Oh, and we should probably get started making our next copy of this ship. Should have done that as soon as we took off. But it's not as big of a deal now that it, we've got the infrastructure in place to charge these much more quickly. Oh, that was surprisingly quick. Um, all right. Get the modules included. I'd kind of like to put the beacon... Oh, I guess this beacon's going to be a little bit different. But definitely put it where there's no Naquitite anyway. And... Can we start with this, perhaps? Don't need that one. Is that really... Yeah, it kind of is. We could move all of these over a tile, but we're going to need another miner out here regardless. But I don't really want to add another miner just to get this bit. Will not fit. Why not? Cannot build on empty space? Okay. Uh, we 
we can add more drills if we want more throughput, but that's good. That's good coverage value. Alright, so how does this one happen to line up? One off. No, you know what we can do? Is move all of these up a tile. And then I wonder how close we'll get with our multiples of 15. But yeah. One off indeed. Alright, so let's get our scaffolding extended out this way. I have to use this emote more often? Yeah. I do tend to say that without even thinking about it. Uh, we need to turn these off. I can't do it remotely. Also, uh, we need some power. And now I can actually see consumption. Negative 80%. Negative 80%. And plus a hundred percent. Okay. Perfect. Did we did we run out of mines? Really? I can handcraft a few. We we need three, I can make five. Yeah, we have no drills. Okay. Wasn't expecting that. It's the hallmark of your channel. <laughs> Fantastic. I guess it is. Uh, Alright, we can put these down as ghosts at least. And that is, what, five tiles? It's four tiles, isn't it? No. We could make it five, seven, and seven. It's fine. Oh, but if we... We've actually technically got coverage with the point defenses. I don't think we need this many over here. I'm just thinking about where to put them. In fact, I should just select, like, a couple. Uh, I think this will be fine, actually. And... I'll still have the maximum being requested in the chests, but we'll pick up what's already in there to redistribute it. And then we need Robopot. Actually, I probably should have... It's fine. No, is it though? If I put... I could put this here, actually. Oh yeah, these things actually reach further in terms of... Um, the the logistic network, but they don't have as much reach with uh, building. So that was easy enough. I don't really think the bots will be recharging here though. We can save a little bit of power. I guess it's pretty trivial compared to the 20 megawatts of beacons, though. A 
I'll be able to speak emotes soon enough. Oh no, fantastic, that's OP, so good. What's that say? Wrong, more faster, words are hard. Rigged, no, yes, oof, love, kill. That, that was some whiplash. Bye, raid, T. Okay. One off, one job, and sheesh. That is quite the collection. Alright, uh, let's go and make sure our media defense is distribute a bit, uh, distributed a little bit more evenly. In fact, I would like to put some here as well. Um, let's grab this. Okay. Decon... Wait, no, don't deconstruct it. Actually, no, that, that'll work. Why am I stuck? Oh no, what's going on here? Uh, jet pack to the rescue. That should be... Fine. I can't control click this into my trash slots. Really? Or even. Okay, there, there we go. Uh, that's what I want to see. Okay. Oh my lord. Whiskers as well. Then them's emote words. For military things I just drag item to logi requests and the drag requests to zero. It's annoying, yeah. Um, we're still mining, right? This is full. Oh, I didn't change these to purple chests yet. I'm pretty sure what's in purple chests counts as being in the logistic network. In fact, I'm positive. So we'll keep the circuit wire there. over to this other one. Oh, we also... Well, first of all, let's do this. We also need figures that that wouldn't reach. Uh, how about this? Good. We need to add the contents of those chests to the logistic network sans the ship. Cool. So we got 10k here, 12k in the ship. Very good. I might just move these around a little bit so that they're slightly more readable. Um, that looks kind of weird, actually. Let me add some scaffolding here. Don't tell me we're out. No, we're good. Oh, come on, that... 
That's just rude. That's malicious compliance. Okay. Apart from the wires crisscrossing there, that's pretty clean. We can clearly see what it's doing, that's the main thing. And I think that's it. Oh, uh, we don't actually have sulfuric acid up here. Apart from placing that corner piece, I need to switch off those shields for just a moment. All bots are passive aggressive. <laughs> hey, Cipher Cap. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Deep space science, indeed. I'm much, much happier with this iteration of our deep space mines than the previous ones. No, oh, what I save. And lazy. Lazy bots. It's over three hours without break. I have no words for you. I see what you did there. Why not active aggressive bots? Indeed. ADHS. Graffiti up chat. Indeed. All right. I think I will take a break now that you mention it, though, as soon as we... As soon as we get this part done so I don't have to remember that little detail. The map having a hernia. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than it was before. Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we're going to switch these off for a second. Switch them back on. And we're good. And once... Uh, how confident am I? I'll wait till the bots stop moving, and then I'll make sure we leave some... Oh, we've already got some in this chest. It's fine. Yeah, they're only putting stuff into... Uh, into the storage chests now. So I think we're ready to go. Unless we want to place anything else, partly just to make room. For a bit more Nacrotite. But I don't really see the need to worry about that. This one... Oh, 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 I'm glad I checked that. They're not getting fluid. Oh, and we need to wait till this is 5,000 degrees as well, so that the uh, the media point defenses aren't going to go to sleep the moment that we leave. So we need one of these, one of these, and that one's already working actually. No, it's not. Why is there so little sulfuric acid? Oh, it is kicking in. It's just... There's hardly any... Uh, we hardly need any fluid flow. Like, literally four per second over here. But given the shape of the piping, it's taking its sweet time. We've actually consumed almost all of the sulfuric acid. Huh. That was quick. Well, the important thing is we have checked, uh, and this one tank is more than enough to fill these chests with Naquitite. So that won't be a problem. You only had one tank on the ship, yeah. Um, 
I just didn't realize how much storage we had for Naquitite that we would actually consume all of the sulfuric acid. Not to mention that we consumed it that quickly. I mean, we had 25k, so I guess it's been almost a thousand seconds. Even though U UPS is only 22, it didn't feel like it. Oh, that's fine. The next ship is already halfway here with another 25k. As long as the 25k is enough to fill the ship, I don't mind this at all. Need to copy this spaceship? Indeed. Uh, have I posted it to the Discord? Let me check. I don't think I have. Let's do that. Uh, export new string. Let's double check. Yeah, no, the last one I posted was the player ship. Alright, so first of all... That. We need... We need a little screenshot. Should I get one of the ship in motion, or... It's a little dark, but I think it looks a little bit cooler than just getting it from the blueprint. Do you need another circuit for empty buffer tanks? Uh, I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure we've calculated that this is more than enough sulfuric acid to fill this up. Um, I certainly hope so, anyway. Alright, let's paste that. Drop that. And then... Into the Discord you go. 1,000 hull... Antimatter hauler. All right, that is on the Discord. <laughs> and that was a very quick reaction. Thanks, Veldak. All right, um, I do want to wait until this thing warms up. And I was going to say either that or this ship gets here so that uh, it'll run off of the ship's power plant. But... Then the ship will just leave, and it'll leave this thing cold, literally. So I think we'll wait here for a little while. Let's fire up some words on stream. Uh, where is it? Words. And I'll be taking a break for a few minutes. Once this thing loads. Pause and play to reduce steam, uh, stream delay. Indeed. Alright, let's put on the autopilot. Although I still have to start it manually the first time. Alright, words are starting in 30... Oh, wait, let me fire up the screensaver first. Alright, words on stream in 30 seconds. And I'll be back in a few. Maybe go into advanced mode and tick low latency? Uh, I've done that. Is that a client thing as well? or? Yeah, I did that a while ago client thing, yeah. Uh, I guess I should double check. Is this a OBS thing as well? I thought it was a Twitch option. I have it on too, but it's weird. Client thing. Okay, cool. Thanks. Alright, 
back in a few.
Fantastic. One more. Yeah, there's fake letters on some of the later levels. Nicely done. Alright, let's continue. And where were... Wait. Did the screensaver work? I used... Yeah. I just didn't see it happen, I think. Okay, what are we up to? Only 1300 degrees. I kind of wish... Hmm... Theoretically, if I had heat pipe, I could transfer heat from here to here. But I don't have heat pipe, and even then it would be a little bit of a nuisance uh, to sort that out. Um, what I might do is remove... oh, I already have, because I didn't do this. Uh, we're not going to auto-launch the ship. I'm going to go back home. How are we still mining Naquitite all of a sudden? Or are the bots just still... Oh, they're still moving this stuff around. Okay, that's fine. Alright, let's head back to Nalvis. Yes, Nalvis. And I should have checked... Uh, Stardust 2 is almost there, so hopefully... doesn't really show the energy for these things. Hopefully we don't get hit by an asteroid before... Uh, before the new ship gets there, but I've disabled auto-launch, uh, so once it gets there power is restored, and we'll wait for this thing to reach 5k, or another ship to replace it. Weren't you blueprinting another ship of these? Yes. Yes, I was. And while we're at it... Uh, let's publish this onto, what is it called, Factorio Prints? Uh, what? 
What the? Something is amiss on Factorio Prince. Oh, okay. Uh, create. Is the shape of the ship designed by you or the game sets it up like that? Uh, it's an emergent property of the way the spaceships work uh, and my design. So spaceships have... The engines have to be at the back with nothing behind them to get the maximum efficiency. Uh, also, there's a streamline step, which is basically like if the ship is somewhat aerodynamic, uh, it gets a little speed bonus. This area of space is in a gritty nebula. If you streamline your spaceship, you can improve your spaceship's maximum speed by around 30%. Making a flat box front should be avoided, but you don't need to build a wedge. Up to one third of your spaceship's front can be flat with no penalty. Circular shapes should also be fine. You can manually trigger an integrity check to see how streamlined it is. Big long stick rocket faster. There is a bit of a penalty for building your ship too long and thin in terms of hull stress. Uh, more round-ish designs uh, don't get that penalty. Cool, thanks. No worries. Vilsonic, Cobalt Ether. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. To be there, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing also. What's our ETA? Only 16 minutes. All right, let's uh, let's get this blueprint done. Create. Uh, I think I already copied this, but let's make sure. Whoops. Blueprint string, image, uh, I guess I'll grab it from the Discord. And... That'll do. Tags. I guess there's no spaceship tag or anything. I'll just leave that blank for now. Mods other? Sure. And save. What are the yellow gears in the blueprint components? They're basically like ethereal entities that hold on to settings. Um, so like with, uh, with crafting combinators, there's a little, um, entity that looks like a blueprint, um, uh, that you sometimes see. It's just holding onto the settings for that, uh, for that combinator. Mazel Fazel, good to see you again. Well. Welcome, hope you're doing well. There's also drag penalty and slowdown from meteors hitting shields. Meteors hitting the shields slows it down. So less wide is better, but have no idea where the sweet spot is. Hmm. I think uh, that makes me more inclined to stick to what I've been doing where the shields are a last resort. Um, and we try to shoot as much down as we can with lasers. Yeah. Is our ship almost there? 55 seconds. We're probably not going to get hit by meteors in the next minute or so. Oh, that's interesting. 
So this thing is losing power, but it's actually still got two shots. Uh, if it needs to. Because it actually charges up four shots with the point defense ones. Good to know. Okay. I'm more interested in confirming that the sulfuric acid tank is more than enough to fill the ship. This thing is built, but we need to wait for it to hit ideally 10,000 degrees. It's already a quarter of the way there, pretty much. And that reminds me, actually. Uh, we wanted to add inserters here. And we wanted to add a request for inserters here. Fantastic. So I'm wondering for interplanetary item transport if it's better to take one of these ships and fill it with chests or have loads of these ships with just a handful. Uh, the chests are pretty expensive in terms of hull stress. So we're very nearly at our limit. Here. Well, we, we basically are at our limit. If I add one more chest, it goes over 1k. Um, I think it's 0.5 hull st uh, container stress per one stack uh, from the chests. So whichever one of these numbers is bigger is what it goes by for like how heavy the ship is. Um, we're, we're very close, both in terms of ship size and container stress, to our maximum right now. Which is why we've got six engines on this thing. I quite like this design, though. But yeah, uh, 30... 33 chests full of resource and a speed of 214 I think is pretty good actually um, for something that we can get as soon as we have antimatter what's going on here oh I didn't I didn't set the ID uh, what's this called stardust Clamp ID should be 372. 372. And... Uh-oh. Uh... 372 to 372. It's not connected. Oh, no. Uh, Stardust 2. And that should get it to land. There we go. So I need to update uh, the blueprint, actually. Right after I uploaded it as well. Select new contents. And save. And then, not to forget number 3... We just need to connect that wire. Cool. Oh, indeed. WTF is that? Uh, WTF is what? Mal, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think what T-Hex has now is good hollow size. I'll probably go a bit bigger and don't use robots to load. 214 for an ore hauler is pretty decent. Oh yeah, Alex Hudson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't inventories... 
don't count up to a specific minimum. Uh, that minimum would be as long as you stay below hull stress, uh, it won't slow the ship down at all. Whichever one of these numbers is higher is what counts. This will use maybe four to five ships to mine Naquium. Yeah, significantly, uh, it'll be a significantly lower ship count than our former designs. And if we can phase out, uh, we, we've got literally over a hundred ships in Calidus, but most of those would be our uh, shuttles. But that said, we've got an awful lot of ships, uh, and if we can reduce the number of those, we'll probably get at least a couple of UPS back. Not to mention, if we can standardize on this one design, it's going to make it very, very easy uh, to make new outposts. We're already like a fifth of the way back. Excellent. I'm debating using 10k cogs for name in base, or bonking 50 times. <laughs> Rorosaur, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, Speaking of things we need to do in the orbital base, let's pick this stuff up. And on Nalvis. I wanted to use ships for everything, but I decided to use rockets for most things within solar system. And only interstellar travel or engineering slash supply ship. Fair enough. I can't wait to get to the point where I don't have any more cargo rockets, personally. They're just kind of a kind of a nuisance. Um, so what should we do while we're waiting to get back? We probably. I wonder if our Naquatite has gotten back yet. The several ships of it that were all close together. That is. I think they have. I think this is them on their way back. Oblong 12, 6, and 9. And 8 as well. So we've probably got more than a bit of work for our Naquium processing area to do now. Although... Why is this one not launching? We've got zero Naquatite, we don't have ice, and we do have Ion Stream. Why do we not have ice here? We do have 2,000 water ice. Oh, wait, where are you going? Probably because I didn't... Ah, I see the problem. I did update this, it's actually just that it's full of ammo instead. That'll probably be all it takes. In a way, SE is mindful of the players in allowing for food slash coffee breaks during extended travel, indeed. Well, I mean, you can still do a lot of stuff with the navsat. I think your research bar hasn't moved in the last three streams. It's fine. This is fine. I wanted to use ships for everything, but I decided to use rockets. Oh yeah, I read that already. Derp. Alright, so once this thing gets a little bit more ice and stuff, it'll be on its way. Um, and we probably have a few ships, or at least one, 
might be waiting to replace it. Not today. But yeah, we've got... Uh, we've got a fair amount of Naquium to go through now. I don't know if it's going to immediately cross the threshold to send some up to space automatically. Oh, quite likely, actually. Well, relatively soon. How close are we to sending out our next ship? Oh, it's at 5,000 degrees? I could send it pretty much any moment. Um, however... Oh, I didn't even realize this fills it up with repair packs. I'm okay with this. We've got it set to stack size of 1, so it won't end up like... I, I don't think it would happen anyway, but it won't end up like trying to insert and it can't continue. Super cooled beer? What? Satisfactory has a coffee mug in the game actually? Yeah. And you can't spill it. Yeah, you can jump into an obstacle course made out of, uh, what are those tubes called? You know, the, uh, the travel tubes that can launch you all over the place? You can fly through the air at Mark II and hold on to your copy just fine. Just saw a beer freezing in front of my eyes. Left it in the freezer to cool off quickly, but it was probably too long. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I think we'll just wait for like... 7,000 degrees before we send this thing along. Actually, this ship... This ship has only consumed... Uh, 1,000... I mean, sorry, 125 degrees. In the whole time that we've been flying it around. So I think we'll be safe to send this thing out already, actually. Alright, your target is Stardust. Your name is Stardust 3. Whoops. And your quest is Nacritite. Oh, I should have checked that it was full of antimatter, but it's got quite enough. Let's get started on the next one. Why do you have RoboPorts in the ship? Doesn't it give an inventory penalty? Does it? I'm not sure. Let's see. I saw the old, uh, our old ship here. Hull stress 220, container stress 488. Happens to have room for another RoboPort, or a RoboPort. Actually, that's going to connect it down here. That's going to be bad. Uh, we'll just do it quickly. Integrity check. What are those bots doing? Here it comes. 22488. It only added a bit of hull stress. So no, it doesn't act, it actually doesn't count as a container, which, uh, I guess you could exploit for, like, seven stacks of repair packs and a few stacks of robots, somehow. I'm not overly excited about that, to be honest. So you can transport robots and repair packs freely, more or less.
Yeah, if, as long as you control what goes in and out of the Robopot. For that, you'll probably need a chest or two around the port anyway. Unless it's like right next to the walls and you're using long arm inserters on the other side. Whoops. Uh, and, and you're using long arm inserters on the other side, maybe? I'm eager to get this thing back to Nalvis. Nine minutes remain. Oh, and I should rename this, um, Stardust One. Cool. I will steal your idea and use less shields for defense and more lasers. Fair enough. Impossible to land on Entity, but there used to be old versions. Let's just say it was satisfying to land a big ship directly on biter nests. Oh no. Yeah, it doesn't let you do that anymore. I mean, you can land right next to them, and depending on your DPS, just instantly delete them. I have two layers of shields to do 330 speed. That's not bad. Okay. Um, we're not having any trouble keeping up with the antimatter, right? Doesn't really look like it. No. No, this is this is quite good, actually. Very good, actually. Let's make sure we're going to get some science done today. Um, we've got this thing to make sure it's switched on, and we're going to need some plate up here. Uh, this thing doesn't require anything exotic, so we've got lots of nanoengineering data. Well, when I say exotic, the only thing I sort of really think of as exotic anymore is Naquitite. Um, here we have... Oh, right, that's the sushi. That's why it's still moving. I'm missing some Naquium cubes. Um, Naquium cubes, I think, are going to get taken to the mall, though. We've got 288, and we're looking for 2.5k... But we need it for... But we need it for science. Where are we making the cubes? Here they are. That requires a whole lot of Naquium plate. Um, how many antimatter engines and stuff? Nothing? In the mall, at least? We've only got 12 engines left. Uh, that's two ships. And booster? 18. Uh, yeah, we've got exactly enough for two more ships. Well, slightly more booster tanks. Um, but I think I will stop requesting Naquim Cube to be delivered here for now, so that we get some more science. I mean, technically I should probably just keep spamming ships, but I would definitely like to play with Arcosphere collections sooner rather than later. Not to mention, uh, actually build, make some deep space science pack too. What's the win condition for this mod? Yeah, there are there are a undetermined number of win conditions. 
Uh, what else? We've got... We need ingots here. We've actually got lots of Nequim energy data. Oh, no we don't. This is one chest for each cargo wagon, so this is less than less than a train load. That's actually a pretty good way to go about it. I should have antimatter. This is fine. Yeah, this is... No Naquim is required for this one. That's good. Uh, Hyper Ladder Starter needs Naquim Plate as well. This one needs cubes. Yeah, we need lots of Naquim. I'm really quite pleased with this, though. Just kind of nice to look at. I'll definitely be doing more uh, splitter-based sushi in the future. Especially because you can control not just how many items overall of a certain type on the whole belt, but rather the pattern that it follows. Like, down here we specifically make sure there's enough room on the far side of the belt so that we can output and also recycle the iridium plate. What are these weird splitter filters? So when we have something like this, let me find a place to put it down. So what happens here is, let's say we have half a belt, but we want it to be a quarter of a belt instead. Actually, let's demonstrate this. And... Like so. What should we use? What have we got the most of? Repair packs of 457,000. Oh dear. Okay. So what's going to happen here is we've got half a belt of repair packs and we want a specific amount less than that. Um, when it comes in here it's got to go through this split. Well, ignore that part for now. It's got to go through this splitter. So then we're going to get 50% of whatever this is. So our half belt has become a quarter belt. Down this way, we're going to get half of whatever comes in here as output. And the rest of it is going to be recycled in here. The red deconstruction planner filter is just to say nothing is allowed to come through this side. So we're bottlenecking on one belt here and then splitting it into 50-50. And then because we've got input priority on the recycled stuff, it's going to slow down what comes through here. Uh, so this whole contraption basically just gives us a 50-50 a split of whatever is coming in. And we can do that with both sides if we want to, although I feel like demonstrating that with a different resource might be a bit better. Why do we have 93k Vitam Lodge Spice? Uh, that's probably twice a chest, but whatever. So we can actually do, um, we can maintain what side of the belt things are on and we can keep a gap between each of these resources. 
which would allow us to add uh, exactly as much of some other resource. So like over here, for example, we've got, uh, what is it called? Space platform plating occupying this half of the belt with half of that. And over here we input um, blank data cards, which I'm quite surprised to see we don't have actually. Wait, we do have it. So what's going on here? Oh, how did I not see this sooner? Hmm, all right, let's fix it. Um, I'm just going to copy this here first, and then... we'll be able to update all of those at the same time. It was blank data cards in the middle, right? So the way these balanced unloaders work is just to force all of the inserters of each type to swing at the same time. We read the hand contents and a little bit of the belt. There we go. So here you can see blank data card and space platform plating alternating on one side of the belt. And this recipe uses uh, one space platform plating, one blank data card, one iridium plate, and some fluid. It spits out iridium plate sometimes. So all the contaminated scrap we've got outputting on this side. Uh, the iridium plate goes back onto the side of the belt that it came in on, but we limit it to half of half a belt coming in, uh, and our final product also gets put onto that side of the belt where we make sure there's room. Is there a messed up underground? No, I don't know how this happened, but what I do here is... That's interesting. There should be more... There should be more of this. So the way I do this without a combinator for a balanced unload, and we can do it with multiple different resources, is all of these inserters are connected to each other and to some belt. We read the belt and we read hand contents, hold. And then we just say whatever resource it is has to equal zero before we swing again. And that causes them to all swing at the same time. So as long as we put it in balanced, it'll come out balanced. And then like this. I'm kind of glad that that was busted, actually, that now we get to see this in motion. It would probably have been backed up by now. Whenever you are trying to show something, you stumble upon something that is broken. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of what is likely to happen when you build a lot of complex things like this. Hey t -Hux, hey Dardano, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. With LTN, are you able to set a requester chest's items for any inbound trains? Uh, if you are asking what I think you're asking, the answer is yes. NG99K, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. 
Uh, so I've got one up here, actually. It's actually it, it's just working right now. Um, so what we do here is it's a bit of a mess of wires, but what we're doing is basically pretty simple. Um, we are reading from the logistic network to tell LTN that all of that is available. And then when the train gets here, we read from... It's kind of hard to see, but the logistic train stop output gives us signals for what is supposed to be in the train. We connect that directly to the requester chest, uh, and we use set requests. Uh, whoops. And from there, it's just a matter of using some circuitry to make sure we input precisely what we're trying to. Which is a separate uh, problem. Uh, to be day, thank you very much for the prime sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. I think you may be doing that with the Omni Smelter. I should pull that blueprint and check it. I was doing it with the Omni Smelter. I stopped doing that. Sounds super simple. Yeah, this part absolutely is. Um, I have gone through various designs trying to to do that for big trains and to do it fast. Oh, this is a good time to demonstrate this, actually. I think I know why we can... Part of the reason why we have 90-something thousand Vitamelange Spice here. Um, because this is supposed to offer anything that we've got 200 stacks of. Only 200? Hmm. I should make it a low priority, maybe. Or up this stack size. Uh, any, anyway, uh, anything that we've got a certain amount of in the logistic network, we're offering it back to LTN. Uh, the only downside with this design, well, one of the downsides with this design, is we have to... Let me just check this. We've got 32k ice here. Um, so I'm going to put in... Negative 32,001. And then it's going to start loading. Uh, this is just so that we know when to load the train. Uh, we go anything equal to negative 1. And we have constant combinators that say, for example, negative 8,001 coal. Because 8,000 is what fits in the train here. So we've basically got set requests on these chests and then we've got some steel chests so that we can read contents so we know how much is there um once the train actually gets here uh no when the train gets here we set requests uh this red wire let's see green signal Uh, if we haven't triggered this latch yet, we will load the ice into the steel chests. Once we meet this condition where we know that there's a train load of ice in the chests, uh, we trigger the latch, so we stop these inserters, and we start these ones. And all of that is just because if we have more than one cargo wagon, we need to make sure that these are perfectly in sync. Because we can't read the contents of an individual cargo wagon. We can only read what's in the entire train. So in order to have a system that loads the train without the inserters sticking out, holding onto ice afterwards, which will mess up the next train, uh, we need to be absolutely sure that there's enough to put into the train before we start loading it. I've gone through a few designs of ways to try to load a long train relatively quickly um, and certainly reliably from the logistic network. This is probably the best one I've come up with. Unfortunately, we can only fit four inserters per cargo wagon. Um, and for the 
for the Omni Smelters, I actually ended up going back to just using static requests so that we can read the contents. Because uh, even if we use Nacrotite as well, we've got just enough stacks between uh, all of these chests if we use both sides um, to have room to have a train uh, to have a little bit more than a train load available um, for each resource. Thanks, no worries. The part I don't get is how do you ignore what you want at the block? I tried it and was delivering it. It was delivering it to itself. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, I've got exactly an example of this right here, actually. We've got a storage block. Um, in this case, it's copper ore. And this is a great example of how to use uh, encoded network IDs. So it's in binary, which is to say... If you set it, if you set encoded network ID to three, that means one and two inclusive. Uh, so you can set it to one or two or four or eight or 16 and so on. And it'll be on its own network only. Um, but you can, you can have overlapping uh, encoded network ID like virtual networks. Um, but putting aside the binary part, which makes it a little bit more confusing if you're not familiar with that, all we're doing here is if we don't include an encoded network ID, the default, which I think is negative one technically, uh, default network ID, negative one. So what that means is if we don't give it an encoded network ID, uh, the station is able to interact with any other train station. Um, however, if we give this one, for example, an encoded network ID of 1, and this one an encoded network ID of 2, LTN will not schedule a train to pick up from here and to take it back up here. Thanks for the info, anytime. Um, yeah, I was, like, trying to figure this out the first time. I was a bit, you know, not sure how it was going to work. Uh, but once I actually did it, it was surprisingly easy. Especially because I, I, I think they did an excellent job of, like, deciding how that would work, that... The default encoded network ID is just, it will interact with any other station, and then we're just making exceptions to that rule. When I, Before I started using this, um, I thought that I would have to go to, like, every train station that I'd put down so far and give certain groups certain network IDs. Um, but it was actually the total opposite of that. Kaboom. We are only 95 seconds game time out from Nervous. Fantastic. Wait, where are we? Oh, that's us. Heading past Taser right now. Cool, cool, cool. Um, still processing Naquitite, I should think. Might actually have to expand this in the not too distant future. I hope so. I haven't triggered another train delivery just yet. How much plate do we have? 2.6k. Um, we need 3.2 for a train to come and pick it up. 
I think we're super prioritizing. Oh no, we're circuit prioritizing. Okay, that makes sense. But the stack size... I should probably go to the trouble of actually adding a arithmetic combinator to this. Uh, is it this one? Nope. This one? Here we go. So we'll pretend there's half as much Naquium plate because the stack size is twice as high. Um, so that we can say stack-wise Naquium ingot, we're going to keep it equal to Naquium plate. Because otherwise, one or the other of these, is, in this case, Naquium Plate, is probably never going to be picked up. Um, so, Arithmetic Combinator goes here. And... I could use each, but let's just make it more clear. Nequium plate times... Because we can't use decimals, actually, it needs to be the other way around. Uh, Nequium ingot times two. As Nequium ingot... Because the stack size here is 10, and the stack size here is 20. Uh, and then we're just going to say Naquium ingot has to be greater than or equal to Naquium plate. And that's when we're going to allow production of more plate. So currently we've got 2.5k versus almost 1,000. Wait, what? So we're outputting 1.9k. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 what? Input signals 964. 964. Yeah, no, that's right. Huh. I think I expected to immediately make more plate when I put this through. But maybe a train came and got ingots relatively recently. But in any case, that should keep these two outputs balanced. Okay. Uh, four seconds. Let's go. Oh, and... First thing I'm going to do when we get there is make sure we're not going to auto launch. Uh, where even is... No, I don't think I added the logic to auto launch yet. Well, that works out well. Materia Bullet, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, I was going to disable uh, auto launch this time because I need to... Did I already... Yeah, 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 I did. This needs to request from buffer chests. Uh, everything that doesn't belong in this robot network is going straight to this chest to be picked up by a vanilla train. That should include scaff... No, scaffolding is allowed to be here. Uh, and instead of setting precise limits, I just said up to a million of anything that's allowed to be here. We're not going to trash it. Um, so... I think it would be simpler this time 
Uh, why don't I... Logistic trash the scaffolding. Oops. Oh, that's fine. Uh-oh. Frame subs are important. It's only one free sub they have and they decided to invest that. Yeah, I know. I appreciate it very much. Alright, let's throw this in here. Uh, I guess we have to wait for the vanilla train. Here, here it is. That didn't take long. Too many bots in motion, I can't quite see what we're doing. Oh, we're already taking the Naquatide away as well. How many train loads of Naquatide is this? 33 chests. Uh, 1584 divided by 160. It's almost 10. That's pretty good, actually. I don't get a lot of time to play Factorio these days, but I always enjoy your chill stream. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Much appreciated. That is about what I attempt to deliver. Well, not that I go out of my way and, like, put on an act or something. It would be rather difficult to keep that up for seven hours at a time, I think. Uh, we might end up with too much scaffolding here. How much scaffolding are we trying to put in these chests? A thousand? So, why don't we... Uh, two chests is 9,600. Why don't we limit it to about two chests? I didn't actually foresee needing to worry about that. Get closer to the chest and the bots will go exponentially faster. Maybe I should put thicker, a thicker set of doors here. I don't carry the doors, though. Um, that can go in there. Is that all of them? I do believe we've emptied all of the regular chests. Okay, so now we can add the auto-launch logic, which is to say there needs to be zero Naquatite in the ship. Oh, we've done this already. Zero Naquatite in the ship, uh, everything greater than or equal to zero, and then we've got a red wire giving us a negative for stuff that we still mean to put in the ship. So apparently it doesn't have the passive provider chests, for example. Use even distribution to clear your trash super fast. Oh yeah, I always forget about that one. I saw, I think it was Disnoff. Um, hasn't played much Factorio yet. I, I forget who it was necessarily, but someone was saying... Uh, there should be a button to, you know, dump all of your items in inventory into the surrounding uh, containers and buildings and stuff. Even distribution does do that. I think it's Shift-C. Evenly distributes unneeded items into nearby machines. Yeah, very nice. 
Um, so why don't we have passive provider chests here? I thought... Oh, probably because we haven't requested them. Let's not get hit by a train today. Uh, so we've got 8, 16, 17, 18 different items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 16, 17. I think it's just the passive provider chest that I need to add here. Alright, so we are checking for a lot of sulfuric acid, uh, a lot of water, a lot of antimatter stream, which we don't have yet. Apparently. Wait, what? This says 50k. We're only checking the one fluid tank. If antimatter stream greater than or equal to 49,900. Uh, okay, it says 50k, but that's a lie. We're very close. Uh, and then if Naquitite equals zero... Same trick that we did, which is much easier to see clearly at our outpost. Uh, we read the entire logistic network minus what is in the chests that are not part of the ship. Uh, for anywhere that Naquitite can be put, uh, can be stored. And then we have a result, which is how much... Nacrotite is in the ship. So currently... Uh, 15,800. It says there's 22k. Did I... Did I... Did I calculate this very poorly? 33 chests. That's 34, not including this one. Uh, whoops. Uh, 480 times 33, 15,840. How do we get 22k on the red wire? It says there's 6.7k on the green wire. This is 14 times 480. Oh, we're out of sulfuric acid, but the ship is full, so it doesn't matter. Nineteen thousand. Wait, that was a different number, wasn't it? There might just be a wire connection that we missed. No, that's... Yeah, 19,000 is what's in those chests. Well, this one says 6.7. It's disconnected. Uh, that green wire needs to connect here as well. So now our output is 15k. Yep. It doesn't give the precise number there, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, we're, I, I disabled the auto launch here because I want to make sure we wait until there's enough heat for this thing to run itself. Did I... Do we still have both of those pointed? Yeah, we do. One takes a long time to heat up, but it won't need that much heat to keep going. A quick UI button would be just as handy over the key combo. Yeah, def for sure. Especially it would be more discoverable as well, right? Use the even distribution to clear your trash super fast. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so with the same basic math, because uh, we can account for everything in the logistic network except for what's in the chest here. Requester chests don't count. Uh, we do a little subtraction. We know that there's no Nequitite in the ship. And then this one here. 
We're looking for four prods, 47 passive provided chests, and... What? Well, that'll work. Uh, for some reason, scaffolding keeps flickering around. Oh, right. I think I know why. Yeah, the logistic network reports negatives when bots are trying to pick stuff up. Sometimes that's a problem and we need to uh, put down a decider combinator just so we can say each greater than zero output each input count just to get rid of the negatives. But in this case, uh, that's only going to be an issue when we're trashing things that aren't supposed to be here, so I'm really not worried about that one. So now it recognizes that it's got one more scaffolding in this chest than it asked for. So the only thing missing is ice. Well, it's not actually missing, it's doing the same thing again now, where the bots are moving that stuff around, so it's giving us a negative signal. Okay, cool. Uh, that is... My personal requests for prod modules are kind of messing this up a bit. And now we're only waiting for passive provider chests. And there's probably a train... I was going to say there's probably a train already bringing that, but it's taking its sweet time getting here. Too many stations with this name. I didn't update it yet. The yellow light tells us that there's a train on its way from LTN to this stop. It's ice again. I think it's the ice train. No, that one's going back to the depot. I can't find which... Oh, I think it's still yellow because that train hasn't gotten back to the depot yet, maybe. Um, we should probably not limit this to one train. Also, I think for now I'll just drop off the passive provider chests. So that will get us to every condition has been met to launch this ship. So we need five green on the decider combinator. If green equals five, output spaceship launch, and we're going to change that to one once we're absolutely sure that we're ready. Are we giving it a destination? No, we're not. Uh, there's two ways that you can do this. I used to do it this way. I'll put everything input count, and then we put a decider combinator here, and connect that by the red wire. Uh, but I kind of like this better now. We're going to have... We're always giving it the destination signal. And we just output um, spaceship launch when we're ready. Destination is... Asteroid field 1106. Asteroid field 1106. And we can confirm that by clicking on the console and see that it says Stardust. Uh, I think we're ready. I'm going to change. You've got fuel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got all of these conditions to make sure um, that it's going to be okay. And I'm pretty sure it's only not launching right now because we're... Actually, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate that. I'm going to do the each greater than zero output each thing. 
disconnect this for a second. And then... We're not going to send negatives from the logistic... Uh, from the robot network. Hmm. I guess that doesn't actually help in this context. Why would it still be negative, though? All of this scaffolding is subtracted from... What's in the logistic net? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see why it doesn't help in this context, actually. Rip. Um, what I might do... is just get rid of the limit on scaffolding in this network until the ship takes off. This is not going to be a long-term problem, but I'd like to see the auto-launch working. So we're still waiting on 29... That's weird. No, don't take those! Oh my lord. Uh, I didn't whitelist passive provider chests yet. So I need to put a large negative number on this set requests for anything that's allowed to be here. I'm just going to put that in my trash slot. And now we have everything we need in the ship. And we should have five green signals. This one's yellow. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I remember this. Uh, that was why I put some constant combinators saying just like five of these signal types over here. Because this wire, well not this wire, but this one, is connected to the logistic train stop input. It's giving us a signal of yellow. And because this is looking for everything greater than or equal to zero. Uh, that condition is not met. So we're just going to add this thing, let's put it down here actually. We're just going to say all of the colors that we might get from LTN. I think that's all of them. Those are necessarily going to be positive. There we go. Okay, now we can get rid of the excess scaffolding that's here. That all seems to be working. We should have a ship ready to launch. Oh. Well then. You saw nothing. Uh, we will have a ship ready to launch from there in... I don't actually know how long it takes to warm up. But the main bottleneck there is going to be heating up the energy beam receiver. I think we got a train delivery from here. Uh, maybe not. Should we launch early? What's our rate? Most of... Something like 0.9 per second ingots. That is not a lot. I don't know if we're yet at the point where we can keep up with this thing all the time. Why is this one not launching? Probably for the same reason the last one wasn't. 
Just need to make room for the ice. Uh, and that means getting rid of at least a stack of media point defense. I guess I could have just gone over there and taken it since I'm actually physically present this time. More heat, indeed. Uh, Rich. Rickos, Richos, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I just caught myself thinking about life support and then realized I was on Nalvis, though. That's cool. Uh, I think I will launch these early. Hopefully we can get some science done. But yeah, everything's going pretty smoothly now. Just need to spam some more ships. But we could take a little break from that just to actually get some science. I really... Uh, 2,000 though? No wonder I was just spamming ships. Hmm. Should I add some more of these? Do I have prods still? Yeah, I have prods. Let's get my spider in motion. And... I didn't le really leave room for expansion here so much. 24 per second. We're net positive on washed naquitite. By quite a lot, actually. Oh yeah, because the original looked like... Uh, where did I put it? Space exploration... The problem with this build... Uh, was just that the input naquitite from the rail liter literally wouldn't be able to keep up. Because the stack size is quite small, and I did like 180 second or something like that naquitite in. Also, uh, I decided to just have dedicated furnaces for naquitite, uh, naquim ingots, because whenever we swap recipe, uh, we lose the bonus production. Uh, I've got that set to not happen very often with our Omni Smelter blocks. But I can hardly tolerate that for such a slow resource. Especially such a slow resource that there's no infinite source of. Everything's in temporary mines. But it might be about time... It might be about time to build a block. We get one stack of this every uh, 12 or 13 or 14 seconds or something. That's ingots. Not counting what gets split, uh, split off for plate. I don't know if we're constantly making Naquium ingots right now just because we got a burst of ships. And or because we've actually reached... Wait, what? Oh, that... Wait, what? We have another ship that ran out of antimatter fuel? You're joking. How? We have a system in place to force them not to take off. Unless they have a certain amount. Like, if they're full, actually. 
What? I need to see the next ship that comes in here. Deep Space Miner 1 is leaving. How much fuel does it have? That's ion. Of course it is. Well, we can try... Uh... Oh, it's probably from an update, and I haven't updated the game. Uh, if what was said earlier is correct, that the... Um... How much scaffolding do we have here? Oh, 8.9k. That's fine. As long as there's room for other stuff. I'm not overly concerned about that. Yeah, supposedly you can land the ships next to each other out in the middle of nowhere to transfer fuel. Uh, if that is the case now, it's... It's probably I haven't updated the game and can't actually do that yet. Oh no, indeed. Um, maybe I actually should... Let's do a rescue mission. That'll be fun. While we're waiting on resources anyway. But yeah, this is working pretty well. Oh, that night vision looks weird. Yeah, I think I didn't notice it before because Afraid of the Dark adds a bunch of light. Well, it's better than darkness, I guess. Oh, this is the regular night vision. Let's get... I know I made a couple of these and don't know where they are, but whatever. Unless it happens to be in the mall. It is not in the mall. I think it's upstairs. Yay for the rescue mission. Alright, perfect night vision glasses. That's better. Fortunately, it doesn't work via the navigation satellite. Okay. Um. Yeah, I really don't understand. Maybe that... Hmm... No, with the amount of time an antimatter ship would take to get here. I think this has to have happened after I was pretty sure I fixed this. Antimatter stream has to be greater than or equal to some amount. And we either look for antimatter stream or ion stream. Three of these conditions have to be met, and it's impossible for both of them to be both of these two to be met at the same time. Big brain? Uh, evidently not. Uh, box... wait, what? What? Where is... Where is our module box? What? Oh, right! I was pulling it up... wait... It's got some random name. Because we... Oh no, where is it? Oh no. Um, here it is, I found it. It's called the Harrier, for some reason. So it's got power, that's good. That is... Uh, let's not call it Harrier. Module box. And I need to tell it engage at least once. Hopefully, since we added a power supply to it, um, other than an accumulator, this will be the last time that we have to do that. Maybe you just need a refreshment break? Uh, 
Maybe. I want to get back into orbit first. Actually, I want to get moving in our player ship to attempt this rescue. Uh, Alright, module box should be at its destination. Fantastic. And how many modules do we have? 264. I'm going to send it back and forth when it gets 250 modules or zero. And I'm hoping to see it'll actually move on its own this time. Nope. Is this ship just special? Why do I always have to click engage with this one? I don't understand. Oh no. Uh, yeah, but I'm gonna ride this one back into orbit, I think. Uh, where's my spider? There we go. Oh, wow. Condition met. And launch. And... Engage? Without me saying so? No? What if... Did we have to give it a speed signal all along? I'd, I'd only ever... If this is... If we don't put something in here... Yeah, this is, like, probably the first ship that I never gave a speed signal. Because it never got fast enough to be worried... Uh, to worry about. Are the destination signals correct? Yeah, I just gave it a speed signal. And it started moving. I think that's the answer. Gotta give it a speed signal. Or maybe you have to type something in here if you don't give it a speed signal. I would have thought it defaulted to unlimited. Makes notes that ship needs speed signal to automate. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the special thing about this ship. Um, I bet if we remove the solar panel, um, it's not gonna... That's not going to make a difference. Okay. Well, if it does, uh, worst case, that ship's going to get stuck again. But it doesn't take long for it to drift back to Nalvis or Nalvis orbit. You've never not given one before. Exactly. Uh, here's our fur. Uh, this one needs manual orders given to it. Alright, cool. Uh, is this ready? It actually is, although I'd like to give it a little bit more heat before it goes. But I wanted to grab... Let, let's get in our spider and not get hit by a train. I wanted to grab some antimatter 
fuel canisters. Let's see. We need thermofluid to make it. And then we need thermo We need thermofluid just to empty it. That is such a pain. I'm going to assume that landing next to the ship isn't going to work. So we can do this instead. Uh, call it plan B. We can barrel thermofluid, right? Surely. Uh, fill thermofluid 25 degree barrel? Wait, really? Can we not do the other temperatures? Huh. Fascinating. That means... If we did have to build stuff around the ship to refuel it with the antimatter canisters, we would need to build something to empty 25 degree thermofluid barrels unless we made it on the spot and then we would need heavy oil barrels so let's not not to mention cosmic water we need to empty thermofluid barrels and then we need three machines just so that we can make a little bit of hypercooled thermofluid just so that we can empty the antimatter canister uh, five hour mark break time yeah i guess uh i'm gonna get in the ship and head over actually no i'm gonna let's go to stardust why is Stardust 3 here? We never clicked engage, that's why. Oh, actually, let's leave it there for a second. I want to demonstrate this before we go on the break. Oh, 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 what's this? Unacceptable. Much better. I've got some stuck bots as well. Uh, I'll worry about that afterwards. Okay. Pick up the spider. And we're heading for Stardust 3. And we're going to try and land next to it so that we can transfer antimatter fuel. Well, anchor next to it. Board Stardust 3. It just teleports us behind it. And then, to get back to the other ship, I need to set it uh, to target the player ship. Board bullet. So, unfortunately, we really don't have, except for that very convoluted and nuisance way that I mentioned, uh, we really don't have a way to transfer fuel. Alright, let's head you back to Stardust. That really sucks, yeah. This one should be ready to go. Fantastic. It's still receiving... Oh, many, many repair packs. I'm not too worried about that. 
uh, dust. There's plenty of antimatter fuel. Plenty of water. All of the sulfuric acid. Off you go. And get replaced. All right, let's fire up the old words on the stream. And head over, well not head over, I'm going to take a few minutes and be back soon. 30 seconds to words on stream. Take care, guys. And I haven't forgot to put it onto the screen. There we go.
One more. Fantastic. All right, let's pause that. And back to space exploration. Uh, no, 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 there we go. Okay, so what should we do now? Apart from continue to churn out... Well, actually... We can launch exactly zero more ships after this one. Um, unless I keep taking Nakwin cubes away. And then we don't get any signs. Um... I think we'll stay the course and try and get a little science done today. No idea, but it worked. What is dins? <laughs> Good question. If lots of things are making a din, you can say they're making dins? I never heard... Yeah, I never heard din in a plural before. Okay. Um, maybe we should do some more. Did we get all of these? Yes. I think we did. Should we go get some more tier 9 modules? I can't think of anything else where I need to be present personally. Maybe we really should rescue these ships. Uh, okay, so let's test this. We need to land. Uh, we need to. What? Oh, we have one whole extra ship here. I was just looking for something to park next to. Um, Stardust. This would be Stardust 4. Oops. Stardust 4. And you've got water, sulfuric acid, antimatter stream, all this stuff. Uh, off you go. How can you lose ships? Uh, kind of like losing spare change in your pocket, you know, or behind the couch. Interstellar Quartermaster 2, what are you up to? It's not parking at Nalvis orbit. 
Why is that? Uh... Seriously, what? Oh, let me guess. We've got two of them. That is not so good, actually. On a design that doesn't have any solar panels. It will eventually run out of uranium fuel. If this one doesn't take off. Oh dear. Well, that's our target anyway. Um, why do I have this many solar panels? Uh, I want to take some spaceship floor and or scaffolding. That should be on its way. It is not, because I'm not in a robot network right now. Let's not get hit by a train, actually. Alright, we've got those things on their way. I also need a particle accelerator, I think it is. Yeah, but we need a particle collider to fill it. But a particle accelerator to empty it. Okay. I'm gonna pick up one of each. And I'm gonna have to go somewhere else to pick those up. Where's my spider? Let's jump back to the mall. Also, I wanted to check, we don't have any tier 9 modules here, that's odd, uh, what about here, uh, two speeds, two productivity 9s, I'm pretty sure we had quite a lot more than that, um, wait, what? Where, where are our tier 9 modules? I would have thought most of them we picked up from this ship. They would have, they would have been in our inventory. And if they were taken from us, they should have ended up back here. Or, oh, wait. There they are. I think we just got the wrong logistic network when we tried pressing this earlier. Uh, Taran Toga, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we've got 5, 8, and 6. And downstairs we have 0, I think it was. No, we've got 2 and 2. Should have picked those up and brought them together. Uh, did I get the... Particle Collider, and the other one? Now I did. Okay, cool. Alright, so what we're going to do is, just for a little test run, we're going to park this thing next to one of our ships. And after we board, we're going to see if we can build stuff next to it. So that it's e we can see if it's even possible to bring antimatter out to our stranded-ish ships. This is going to be a mission. Are you going to build an antimatter processing plant on each ship to make the fuel? Uh, sort of, yeah. We're just going to build it next to it with an underground space pipe. Uh... I don't know if it'll let us do it with scaffolding, but I'm sure we can do it with spaceship floor. Um, it'll just be like extending the ship. Alright, so I think it was Interstellar Quartermaster 2 is one of the ships that are hovering, waiting for their turn to land at Nervous Orbit. 
we're going to board. It doesn't actually have a way in, that's okay. What is this bot doing? Catherine of Sky, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so first question answered. Oh, wait, no. Cannot be placed here. Can I place it here? That's a no. Alright then, what about spaceship floor? We don't even have to attach that to the ship. Fantastic. Alright, so we should be able... Uh, I guess I won't actually connect that there, because this will be anti... Not anti-matter fuel, rather, but ion stream. Uh, but pretend it is. I don't actually have that much spaceship floor here. Uh, was it accelerator or collider? Accelerator. We actually need... Uh, I think it's 49... no, 64? No, I, I got that wrong. How, how big is this thing? It's 9 by 9. We need 81 spaceship floor tiles, which is most of two stacks. Uh, just to fit the machine itself. Going to need a bit more ship floor, yeah. But it looks like... It looks like we will be able to do this. So we go empty antimatter canister. We are going... Oh, God. We're going to need to bring 25 degree thermofluid because we can't put the other temperature thermofluids in barrels. And we're going to need room for at least... a thermal radiator and then hypercooler. How fast is this? It's on tier 3 mo Oh, that's not tier 3. Um, well, how, what's the recipe look like? Two seconds? Okay, it won't take that long. We won't need, like, I don't think we'll need room for a beacon or anything. But yeah, we will need one, two, three machines. This is five by five. So, 25, 50, plus three by three, nine. Call it another hundred... We need, like, at least 200 to be safe. Spaceship floor. To have room to... Oh, and just to empty the barrels, we need to... Uh, we need a space assembly machine. Okay. And before we do all that, we need to actually make the antimatter canisters as well. But each canister is a thousand, but we need a, a hundred, we need two barrels of thermofluid to support every thousand antimatter. But we should only need like, I don't know, five or ten thousand antimatter to very comfortably get back. Enough power? There should be enough power. Um, let's have a look. Was it this one? We've got... 9,981 degrees Celsius here still. It's got power. That's not going to be the problem. Expand the Quartermaster to be a rescue ship as well. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm going to take the player ship. It's much, much, much faster. Okay. 
I will need to aim this at the player ship just so that I can board it. That looks cool. Purple there. Whoops. Caps lock. Alright. Does this already have its target locked in? It does not. I think it gets its orders externally. I'm gonna have to manually anchor this thing now. Uh... Unless I... Unless I send it somewhere that's gonna send it back. I'll just try to remember. Okay, back to Nalvis Orbit for now. If only you could park them next to each other, I know, right? And if you could build stations in the middle of nowhere. Uh, okay, so... Step one, we gotta make some... Antimatter canisters. Getting barrels of thermofluid will be trivial compared to that. Magnetic canister, I'm pretty sure we have in the rail network. Where were we making it? Over here? Those are secure canisters. Uh, oh, here we are. Except that's not terribly useful. I could add something to pick those up, maybe? Uh, I think here would be better. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Alright, let's make that happen. I don't think I need to physically be over there myself. Let's get our construction spiders on the scene. We'll be doing a standard pickup station with LTN. And I don't foresee that we'll need... I could split it off from there, actually. And then we don't have these few items stuck until the end of time. I don't foresee needing a great amount of throughput um, for magnetic canisters. So we'll just have enough room to fill one train. They are enough of a nuisance that I would like to just pick them up from with a full train. We could do a short train as well. Yeah. That's fine. Scrolling through Arendelle's Discord channel, some really interesting ships. One uses rail carriages for storage. Yeah, you can definitely do that. In fact, I guess we don't have it anymore, but we had a ship which... Uh, uses artillery wagons. Uh, and they work to full effect, although the ship itself isn't going to be able to defend itself very well from the counter-attack, so we built this stuff around it. Rail carriage for storage, does that give you any advantage? Uh, it's cool, I would think is the main advantage. I think you're probably going to get like, the exact same cost for container stress, which is to say, I think it's 20, con it's going to be 20 container stress for one cargo wagon. Which is not a whole lot compared to the space that it takes up. But, yeah, I think the main advantage of that would be it's cool. 
I remember the artillery, that was cool. Not so cool losing the ship due to the power pylon being taken out. Yeah, it literally got sniped. Oh. Whoops. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't mean for this to get built so quickly. But that's okay. Wait, that's not more symmetrical, that's worse. I wanted it to be like this one. No, it was already perfect. No. Uh, now they're on the ground. What have I done? Okay. Uh, how about this? There we go. Right, so we'll just let it fill up for one whole train load. St provide stack threshold is 160. We can allow short trains as well. I could use this space, but I don't want to. Come to think of it, I don't actually have... Hmm. I need antimatter, twenty uh negative two seventy three thermofluid, and canister. Where is it? And I need thermofluid out as well. We've got a lot of half blocks that we're not using, and I don't foresee using. Nah, I don't want to do that. Uh, how fast is this? One, 25 Naquium plate per second. Let's just get the scaffolding spiders together. I've been... Oh, they're up here. Whoops. Let's just get some new scaffolding spiders together. Wait, how much are the, spi the these spiders carrying already? In terms of scaffolding. We'll see if I can get them to build a block here. And I could also bring some more. If we need it. Stretch. They might actually already carry enough to get a block finished. Let's assume they don't. Yeah, I think it's more like half a block. And I'm carrying almost 2,000. And this is 12,000. Okay. Uh, we're going to need another trip to make that happen. Unfortunately, I've been borrowing the old scaffolding spiders to clean up this mess. Uh, we don't need to worry about the water storage anymore. Actually, this part's surprisingly full, considering everything outside of it is empty. 
We just happened to see the end of it. There's no more cosmic water here. It's quite a bit of chemical gel. That's a little bit precious. We'll come back here when this has been properly emptied. How full is your inventory? Not even a little bit. All right. Let's get you picking up this old stuff. And... Go. If we're going to do a build just for canisters... I don't think there's any reason to put anything except for antimatter in, plant in canisters, though. We can have extreme storage density of ion with this, but we still need a particle accelerator to empty it. And I only care about the density on a spaceship. I'm sure we'll only need like a quarter of a block to do this, but we could probably use the other space for some other minor build, like these ones. Oh, how's our new spaceship doing? So I think this is the lot. Yeah, 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 it's, all, it's ready to go. Uh, what number are we up to? Stardust, number five. And acid, antimatter fuel, water, uh, everything else that really matters for the moment. Off you go. And now let's check. Oh, do I still have to click engage? I think so. Yep. Uh, as for Stardust itself, we've got almost enough heat to leave this alone now. Do we have another ship waiting to park here, perhaps? Not quite. Stardust 3 isn't very far away, but yeah. As soon as this reaches 5k, then we can send this ship on its way. Confident that we're not gonna... Actually, we saw this before. Um, the media point defenses will still be able to fire one to three shots for a time when they're losing charge. So I think we can go ahead and auto-launch this back home. Because it'll just be a few minutes before the next ship gets here. And then... It shouldn't be too long after that one leaves before we've got enough heat for the reactor. ETA, four minutes. Fantastic. Where's our construction spiders? Looks like they've got their scaffolding. Wait, do we have room to maybe get them to carry more of it? Uh, I would say so. Okay, the purple ones... They're not still looking for something, right? Uh, let's see. Space production atron. That's this one. Scaffolding. Make it a thousand. Uh, 
which one was it? This one? Save. Trash unrequested. And copy paste that to all of the purple ones. That is a piece of rail, actually. And then this blue one at the back is Space Logistics Atron. Uh, I don't see you carrying any scaffolding. How about you do that? Space Logistics Otro Save Wait, what? What? Did I typo it? Oh, okay Logistics Oh, it's got an extra C in it, okay So that's a yes Space Logistics Ultron. Save. Crash unrequested. And then copy that to the light blue ones. I think this is also one of those. Need to put the request back in? Yep. Almost missed it. Alright, move close towards the source of this cloud of scaffolding. Rip bot. That is a lot of scaffolding, actually. Alright, that's probably enough. I dare say. And we're gonna do... Let's get back in the spider. We're gonna do some rail... For input... Apparently my... I'm not carrying rail these days. Fair enough. Logistic train stop. Uh, what do we need? Two fluids and canisters, right? Two fluids and canisters. Four seconds. Considering it's a thousand for every single canister, and our max rate of making it is... 600, uh, and we're not going to be using canisters that much. We probably just need like one machine for this. Uh, I wish I could, wait, why can't I? There's no space rail here, that's why. Oh, but I can see up here. where these need to be to line up. Okay. I'm thinking... We can't do it all at one station, both input and output. But we can probably do all of the inputs at one station. If we do one fluid on each side... I don't have the scaffold. And... What would this look like? I've done it before. It's a little awkward though. Just trying to remember how to do it. If we 
have chest like this. That's not going to stay balanced, is the main thing. Why are the second lot of spiders so far behind? We could do something a bit different here. If we... we might actually leave that there. Why is this one bit of scaffolding taking so long? The bots are drunk. I'm gonna take it myself. Okay. So, we don't actually need double pi uh, pumps for this all the time. We could do it a bit like this. Or even that. This won't reach, will it? Oh, it's it's actually perfect. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to do it. Alright, so which machine are we using? The collider, I think. To make the antimatter canister. Uh, we can put speed modules in it if we want to, but I don't think... I don't think it's going to be all that necessary. At least not for now. So we're, we're going to put anti, uh, antimatter in one side, thermo fluid in the other side. Which way? Could we maybe put a couple of them with the output fluid facing each other? We can't have the top have the same input. If we do that, we can either go this way or this way. Uh, I hate it. And I was thinking maybe just an output station like this. I guess if I connect this anywhere but here, we don't actually have to change those signals. Never actually occurred to me before. So this bit is just like coming off this bit, which is just like coming off this bit as far as the signals are concerned. Oh, but it makes this signal upset. Whoops. Uh, what about, like, here? Does that work? Yeah, it does. What would it look like with the train pulling up? Uh, the important parts would be straight enough. Also... Uh, we could probably do better than that. Actually, we should probably just use small trains for this, right? So that's even less of a problem. Okay. Um, let's say... 
I always hate dealing with the shape of these inputs. Can we do both of the outputs down here? Antimatter canister. Yeah, one solid, one fluid. That's easy. Except I think we'll want a long train for the output fluid, actually. Let's just do it here. Scale the summit. Good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello, hello. Uh, station right about there. One, two, three, four. That'll be fine. Okay, so this one will be a requester. This one will be active pickup because we need to get rid of 25 degree thermofluid or else. Uh, which may change the shape that I want to use here. Let's use this again. Canister provider. Where are we? That's on the wrong side, actually. So that goes there. And fluid output can go on this side. Don't forget to connect them. And we will be letting LTM know what's here. So this will be for antimatter canister and 25 degree whoops 25 degree thermofluid fantastic maybe I could point the thermofluid directly at that doesn't really fit Let's just do it like this. That's going to work out to be a bit cleaner. If I move this over one tile, we could even... Faustest. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that actually doesn't quite work. But I could easily change this part. We need some two off nine and four. Rip. What about seven, five, six, seven? No, that's not. There's nothing that makes this line up, is there? How many tiles is it? Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So five, five, and three. Unless I wanted to put like a seven here or something. Uh, we also need the... Belt... Actually, that should be a filter, since there's only one item we ever want to be here. Uh, that would be a little awkward, actually. Let's 
that's already connected. Can we connect these with wire? Not really. This'll do. Let's do it like this, actually. Read belt contents hold. Uh, everything equals zero. Read hand contents hold. that'll get them to output together. And then antimatter can go here, I guess. Let's get rid of these pipes for a second. Ten tiles. This looks a little bit better, I feel like. Okay. Leon... Leonarian? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we can have the... Space pipe is in the way. Oh, I see. We can have that thermofluid go out straight like that. Antimatter comes in like so. Negative 275 comes in this way. And last but not least, that actually works perfectly. Whoops. That doesn't quite reach where I want it to. Unfortunate. All right, bigger than I expected it to be, but that will do. I don't even feel like we're going to need speed modules for this. I don't know how often... I mean, we might make some antimatter reactors eventually, but I don't know how fast we're actually going to need to make antimatter canisters. We need to tell LTN about everything that's in this station. And max that up there. Uh, and this is for canisters of the magnetic variety. I think that's everything. We just need to actually set up our input station. Uh... And we can allow short trains for this one, I think. But we'll set it up so we could do short all long. Oh, and we ha have to actually output the physical final product, but that's no big deal. Cool. Alright, so we are looking for... Canister, uh, antimatter stream, and negative 273 Drigui thermofluid. Canisters stacked to 50, I believe. Yes. Uh, so slightly more than one train load. I'm pretty sure we can fit that easily. Yeah. And then... Antimatter stream. Uh, 
bit over one train load. Negative 275. A bit more than one train load. And we should be able to just switch that on. And that should be our build. Cool. I wonder where our Naquitite is at. Still cooking. I've only got 400 here at the moment, so there's definitely been some movement. Oh, I completely forgot. I sent... Uh, I sent some of this stuff up manually. But I haven't seen it in motion. We're making more antimatter, so that must mean... Yeah, we've got... Not antimatter, uh, ion canisters here. This thing consumes a ridiculous amount of ion. Um, but yeah, we are making Naquium energy data. We've got quite a lot of it, actually. No, wait, I forgot. This is only less than one train load. It's only four chests. Uh, this one doesn't rely on Naquitite. This one relies on plate. Shut down the media. Uh, did we make any cubes or anything recently? 5 point something hours ago. What happened to all that plate that I sent up? We're mostly waiting on Aquium's structural data. We're not getting any ingots there. I should have just kept spamming spaceships. I don't think we're going to see the needle move on the science today. Well, we're definitely not, because we're out of time. Uh, but we will get... Our canisters, at least. So that we can look at... Rescuing our ships. I need to get some barrels of 25 degree thermofluid. I may as well make some of that here. Do we have any of these? Good. Fantastic. I need some barrels, though. I don't have those handy. Um... I guess I could just do it somewhere a bit more convenient. But yeah, we need to fill some barrels with 25 degree thermofluid. And I need to take probably just one of each, honestly. But I'll take a few just to be sure. Um, thermal radiator 2 and some hypercoolers. So that we can turn that into... Negative 275 degree thermofluid, just so that we can empty our antimatter canister. So that we can refuel our spaceship. So, tomorrow, rescue mission. But first, let's see this thing work. Uh, did I not set this up properly? Oh, we don't have enough... We don't have enough magnetic canisters yet. Huh. Okay. Uh, 40 stacks. Short trains only. I guess there's no need to limit that there. I don't know if this is long trains only because fluids are... Oh no! Oh no, I broke it. Oh, oh okay. Alright. Uh, we can fix this. Negative 275 goes up here, actually. Um, I need room for pumps. So it'll have to be around this way. Yep, 
Yeah, I was going to put some conditions on these pumps. And connect that to the logistic train stop output. With that you can check what the train is asking for or trying to unload. And if it's got a negative number, it's trying to empty itself of whatever that resource is. Negative one. So all we have to do is say negative uh, 273 degree thermofluid. If that's less than zero, then these pumps are active. And on the opposite side, it's the same, but for antimatter stream. Once the autosave feels like going. Oh my goodness. There we go. There, 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 there we, there we go. 100%. That means it's finished. Okay. Uh, okay. Why did the UPS drop? That was a save and a half. I think there must be... Uh, can we stop all scans? There's no scan happening. Alright. Negative 273. Less than zero. And I'm going to wait until... Until we've pumped all of this. Before applying the same thing to the opposite side. Actually, these are empty already. Why is this not pumping the last little bit of fluid that it's got inside it? into this tank. I guess I'll just have to delete those. It should push the fluid back in, actually. Now that I think of it. Alright. So, red wire. It's actually kind of out of the way. Connect to logistic train stop output. Same condition except different fluid. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be our antimatter that's waiting to get here. So as soon as that's done pumping, it's getting there. I can help it along. As long as we remove pipes in the order that's appropriate. Um, it should push the fluid into the nearest container, as long as there's room. Train come. And this time, only the pumps on one side are going to activate. Where is our train? I thought it was... Oh, it's like down one level. This part. Uh, 
and perfect. We still don't have the canisters though. How do we not have the canisters? Provide stack threshold 40, short trains. Oh, that's right. I was going to change this temporarily to use short trains. If I allow both, uh, weird things are going to happen, I think. Actually, I guess fluids are going to sort themselves out. Whatever. Shouldn't take long before a train is scheduled to pick this up. Fantastic. Actually, I will allow long trains here, and I'll just set the... Well, no, here's the problem. We need, like, a separate provide threshold for the short trains and the long trains. Unless we just make sure it's full. Otherwise, we're going to get partially full trains. And imbalanced things are going to happen. Hated Hollow, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So there's our canisters. Uh, and I guess we need to wait for a stack inserter to put all those in. Maybe we... Sh what did I just... Medkit. Rip medkit. I forgot those even exist. Maybe I should stop carrying them just to have one, one more stack. Yoink, and yoink, and furthermore yoink, also yoink. And can we finally see this thing working? I believe we can. That's pretty quick for a thousand. Uh, what's wrong with this one? Oh, and that's why we test. Cool. And there's our canisters. Amazing. 20 gigajoules in the palm of your hand. Alright, next time we use this to rescue our stranded spaceships. Uh, let's see who's streaming Factorio today. Death Ribbon Maze still on Mucky. We got speedrun. We got tumbling satellite. Starting up the all in one self building mega base? Okay, that does sound interesting. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions, by all means. And, uh... Stay safe. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for watching. Uh, where's the raid button? There it is. Okay. Say hello to Tumbling for me. Take care, guys. Pretty, pretty groovy because...
That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yo, Tyrannosaurus! Welcome on in!